are a few distinct features of strength training that make it strength training. Here's one of the most important ones. Rest periods. Literally, rest periods are, among all things, what makes strength training strength training. Take them out, do them wrong. You're just doing cardio with weights. Uh, this one comes up because uh, I was talking, had the father-daughter dance this weekend, which I'll tell you guys all about later. Okay. A little bit, but I was talking to some of the dads there, and, and a lot of them are into exercise and working out and stuff, and conversation comes up around strength training, and it's like um, a lot of them are like, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I do strength training, but, you know, to just kind of make it more efficient and intense, I like to do like four exercises in a row do or circuit. five exercises. I'm like, oh, you're doing a circuit. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, that's, that's not really strength training. It's, that's good for stamina. It's not really good, you know, good for strength training. And so I had to kind of break it down and explain. But so many people think, especially the typical person thinks that because you're lifting a weight mm -hmm. or using a machine or doing a strength training exercise, that that means that you're doing strength training. You're yeah. not. It's it's it completely changes the adaptation. Even though you're using the same tools, it's totally different. Well, I think your common person and your average person out there is really like thinking about how to burn calories. And I think like burning calories and trying to kind of balance this whole thing with, you know, what their intake is versus like moving enough. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm weight training though, like how many calories am I burning? I'm always getting that question a mm -hmm. lot. And so to kind of, you know, take somebody out of that mindset takes quite a bit of education uh, to get there. And in strength training itself, you know, so much value there, but you really have to kind of take it back a bit to be like, okay, well, this is the most effective way to do it and actually like focus on building muscle. And then there's this whole like other conversation about metabolism and building that up that you have to have as well. Well, in the, in their defense, it, it is a bit complex. Yeah. Like it, it does seem, it, it seems logical that if I lifted weights if I'm, and, and I'm doing it in a circuit way or, you know, in a cardio based way where yeah. we have short rest periods that I would get the benefits of both. Yeah. Why would it be any different? Right. Right. Why? I mean, I, I you're lifting weights, I'm lifting weights. I'm just doing it with short rest periods. I'm sweating more. I'm getting a, mu a bunch more done. So I'm actually going to get mm -hmm. the benefits of the cardiovascular side. And then I'm also going to get the benefits of the weight, uh, weight side. I don't understand. Like, so I think that's, it's a bit confusing if you don't understand how the body adapts to these different signals and so it to even I sometimes I feel like even when I explain to somebody they kind of like nod their head like yeah okay 100%. But, but but they still go back and do yeah, it. this is good for me you yeah. know why I, part of the problem this is what I realized this weekend part of the problem is that we call them rest periods so mm. people immediately think oh it's because I ineffective need, portion well no yeah. not just that but oh it's because I need a break but what if I don't need a break I could keep going uh -huh. why yeah. would I need to sit down mm -hmm. and rest yeah totally when I can just keep going. Because rest periods are for, for people who can't keep going. They're too tired, but I'm good. I can keep going. So let's yeah. just keep doing this. So we need to like rebrand rest periods because <laughs> it's not that you need to let's rest. Call them growth periods. They're, oh, so uh, much. Yeah. That would be so much yeah, more yeah, effective right. if we growth, called it these that. These are growth periods. It's not bad. <laughs> I've used the analogy of a, a AI car that adapts to your driving abilities to explain like cardio versus strength training, but I'll use it in this context as well. So imagine if you had a car that used gasoline and nitrous. So if you don't, if you're not familiar with how uh, nitrous works, when you're racing a car, you push a button, nitrous gets mixed in with the gas and it dramatically increases the horsepower for a very short period of time. Yeah. You, 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 the, just the way the engine you is. Need in the car. increase. Yeah, you can't keep nitrous going. It'll blow up the engine. It just doesn't work that way. But in a short period of time, it's like 50 extra horsepower, okay? So now imagine you have a car that adapts to your driving abilities. And so the way you drive it is you take off, you hit nitrous, but then you just keep going as fast as you can. Well, your car is going to adapt by improving its gas tank because the nitrous only burned up for 30 seconds. What if instead you hit nitrous, as soon as it was done burning off, you stopped the car, waited for the nitrous to fill back up, and then it again for 30 seconds. And the car adapted that. What would it do? It would make more nitrous. It would become more powerful for those short bursts of energy. This is how the energy systems of the body work. When you're strength training, what you're training is an energy system. That energy system is what contributes to bigger, stronger muscles that also contribute to a faster metabolism, better hormone profile. If I train through that and just keep pushing, I'm now outside of that energy system, and now I'm training other energy systems, mm -hmm. which are more stamina and endurance based, which is okay if that's what you want. But if the reason why you're doing strength training is 
to speed up the metabolism, to build and sculpt the body, then get out of that energy system. You want to train for strength. This is why you do quote unquote rest periods, not because you need the break, but because the break is what makes it effective. Yeah, you got to program that kind of demand, you yes. know, that, that, that influx of, uh, you know, high intense focused output and, um, you know, to, to, to regenerate that is everything. Otherwise then you're not going to be at that high capacity you were with every rep. It's just not going to happen because you're just trying to make it through and endure through no. that. So, so now your, uh, your output is a lot no. less. If your goal is to throw a ball as far as you can, besides technique, what you would do is you would throw the ball as far as you could, and then you would wait and rest until you could exert a lot of power to do it again. You would not be effective if you just kept throwing the ball over and over and over and over, and over as many times as you could until you got exhausted. Obviously, each throw would go shorter and shorter and shorter until you couldn't move your arm, and you wouldn't achieve the the desired outcome. The desired outcome with strength training is strength, muscle, boost metabolism, shape and sculpt the body, get that favorable hormone profile that we talk about that strength training provides. When you get rid of the rest periods, you've now you're literally now not doing strength training anymore. And so as I explain this, you can see people's, you know, light bulbs going like, oh, mm. because what, what people, you know, what they said to me is what I, I've heard so many times, which is, oh, but what if I don't need a rest? It's like, that's not the point. Yeah. You don't, you don't need a rest uh, because you're, you're too tired to continue. You need to rest because that's what makes this strength training. But yeah, we need to call it something else. Today's giveaway is MAPS Power Lift. If you'd like to win that program, here's how you can enter. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it here on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you do all those things, that enters you to win. Also, we have a sale on some workout programs this month. MAPS Performance is half off, and then our Extreme Fitness Bundle of programs is also half off. If you're interested or you just want to sign up, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So what 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 does the sport ball guy do on the most <laughs> the biggest sports day of the year? Oh, what, is, what does he do? Enjoys, <laughs> bro. Let me tell you something. Now. <laughs> do you know how amazing? Hey, do you know how amazing it is going out? He lives for the commercials. And, yeah. No, I don't. I, nothing. We had to watch yeah. nothing. No, no. Oh, wow. You know how great it is. He to plans go, to go out and do stuff uh, where nobody's at. Everything's quiet. He goes to museums. <laughs> yeah. Everything's yeah, quiet. I can do whatever I want. It was great. I went. <laughs> Sunday morning, went to church. After that, I went to the range because I knew that there would be no wait at the range because yeah. everybody's like, yeah, because yeah. sure all, all the men are watching yeah. football. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll be there now because of the outcome. Dude, but, yeah. hey, just as many women watch football as well. By yeah. Way. Oh, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, but anyway, it was uh, uh, like five minute wait, got to do that. And then last minute, booked the Thai massage, which you'd never be able to do. Normally, you'd have to book days in advance. Call them up. Nobody's oh, wow. there. I'll walk in. Wow. Beautiful. So, the, the, your family has to watch, though. Yeah. Uh, some of my family does. Really? Yeah. Like half, like like your cousins, like who they're not watching? Are they not? Big yeah, sport? most of my cousins are watching. Okay. Yeah, they're not super. Um, so you won't even go. To it. So uh, you guys won't even get together like a family thing and even do like a we bar. have before, and, and we would have, you know, if like you know, but it just isn't isn't that big of a deal. But if somebody. You know, invited us over. We probably would have gone. Well, I mean, I would think in, within your family because it's it was the Niners in it. So I yeah. thought maybe that would be if you guys were to get together for a football, you know, game. This yeah. would be the the one. Oh you know, no! Here's why. We, area here's stuff. why nobody planned anything. My sister's husband works at uh, what's the stadium? The home stadium for the 49ers is Levi. Levi. Okay, yeah. he works at Levi's. So he's like a mechanical engineer or whatever. So mm -hmm. he works there. So they get this. I don't know if you guys knew this. If the 49ers ever go to the Super Bowl, all the employees there get an automatic ticket. Oh, that's cool. So him and my sister went to Vegas wow. to watch, to be at the Super Bowl. Wow. While my mom watched her three kids. That's why we didn't have a big party. My mom was watching the kids and people were yeah, whatever. My sister that's awesome. Yeah. So they got to watch it at the Super Bowl. So cool. Yeah. So that's oh, kind of cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yes. So, but, but, so from what I heard, uh, Maybe one of the best Super Bowls in a uh, well in was it? Time. Oh, it was yeah. really good was game. It, super stressful, or was it exactly what the conspiracy theory? Still, said? <laughs> hey, they all said I was that. Looking was out for that with like calls, and, dude. It was so like fair, you know, and okay. honest. The calls from the refs, and so I had no qualms with it. But I was definitely like, 
I'm like, oh, you sure? man, like, I don't know if this is going to go down the so way there was, I want. There was nothing there was, that you, th- no, you thought? No, I, think it, I don't think there so. There was, dude. like, maybe one or two calls that I thought were in the favor of the Niners. They did have, definitely didn't do it anything. It wasn't like, questionable at all. I, really. the, it was one of the best, and when I mean my best games, too, it wasn't just because it was a overtime you know, buzzer beater in yeah. mm-hmm. in type in touchdown to win the game. To it wasn't just that; it was like it was well played. It was yeah. well played on both sides. Yep. Normally, after a game that big, it always because everyone's emotional about it, right? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. that you're oh this <laughs> yeah. did this and that was bullshit, was like throwing like, shit. Yeah, dude, you're was, pointing, pointing oh, the finger man. at every all the reasons why. Where it's just like, hey, at the end of the day, man, just the better team won. There were and some it was cars that were set on fire in San Francisco. Game. Did you see that? Huh? Really? Yeah. Some there were some some damage and stuff in San Francisco. Some cars. Oh, I believe it. But I think it might have been just a regular. There's a lot of people got two. Drunk in San Francisco. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like <laughs> we have to look at the, the it's average. A normal Tuesday uh, <laughs> yeah. up there. They sent out a report. Yeah, oh no, it's... actually, there was less cars set on fire today. Than wow, so it is right. Mad Max up there. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know what I did see? I saw a clip. So of course Taylor Swift. You know, talking about her because she's oh, dating that was a quarterback Why? of the Chiefs or whatever. Her friend that went with her to the game or whatever, yeah. doing like some satanic weird shit <laughs> while the that. game was going on. I Did saw you see that it? Video. No. Yeah. It looked no. like a spell. Like she was doing some weird video. Spell. Pull she it was, up, Doug. She was throwing up little devil horns and like doing this weird like. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah it was weird. Yeah. Like, and that's when the, doing, and that's dude? when the Chiefs won. Just stupid, dude. <laughs> so dumb. There's the people are gonna find some. I mean, I did see the tweet uh, from Joe Biden. If that's real, that's weird. That was really. What weird. is that? He's got like red, like laser eyes, and it's just that's like nothing. Okay, so in the whole memeing world, isn't that like activated? You know, isn't that like a signal for something? I guess that means something. I don't know. I was trying like that Andrew? literally stumped me because normally I'm like, okay, this. I'm like, what's the message here? I mean, this my take symbolism. was that this is up. Joe Biden just trying his best or his team. Is yeah, I was going to say, he ain't trying I to doubt it's him, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, taking is. a page out of the Donald Trump book, you know, throwing some, right. uh, you know, gonna, controversial tweets But with tweets no context, it's he like, He can't what? touch him. What do you mean? There's total context. The Super Bowl just yeah. happened and there's conspiracy theories around it. It said- That's totally it poking said at that. exactly as I planned. Right. So it's poking at that. I almost feel, oh, maybe there's poking fun. Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. I mean, it's- it's, it's uh, a bit brilliant. I mean, come on. You, we have to, whoever's team is doing it, you got to give them credit if we were to give. If it you're says give, just like we drew it up. Yeah. It's, oh, so maybe they're just joy. They're joke. Is this after the game? Yes. Oh. Yes. Because there was a whole spirit conspiracy. Yes. Right and now. it came down to, you was know. Was he I involved guess. in that conspiracy? <laughs> they're just trying to say that. That, the, that the, yes, basically, that it was the, yeah, that they're controlling it. And yeah, yeah. It. I, I mean, I think it's kind of clever. It's whack. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys hear what he said? I've seen better. Did you hear what he said? Biden? Did, did, on a did speed? you have an interpreter? No, he was about. <laughs> he said something like that. I never know what he said. I'm trying to figure out what it was he said. You know? <laughs> he is, yeah. However you want to interpret. No, I did it. Did you? No. I was, oh, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. I have no said. idea what he yeah, says half the time. I don't think he said. How's he gonna? He, there's how was he going to debate? I don't know what they're going to do. You know what I yeah, want? I thought know. you don't have to if you if you were already a city in the general. Oh, you still have to. You I mean, you don't back have to, but boy, would that look bad? That'd be like me and you going up against each other in in a, in a, in a, in a boxing match. Be like, we're not going to box. I just want everybody to vote. You know, almost like that. It's almost like that. I mean, it's the it's the way to go. Like, because you can't you 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 if he goes up there, he risks. Losing worse, I feel like it's but not move. going up there looks weak. Sure, so that's a tough one. But you know, it looks weaker. How much getting up there and getting destroyed. How yeah. much more weak can he look? Exactly. That, to me, <laughs> to me, uh, the, it's the, the play like, is to oh, the play is to not go up there, real. right? If you, if you're looking at politics like sports, yeah. the play is to not go up there. That's the move. Yeah, to go up there and risk you're right because it's it would be a bigger yes it'd be yeah. a big it's better to be like people oh he doesn't need to and then us yeah, argue exactly. over how bad it yeah. is or how weak he is versus going up there if he does and clearly up, getting destroyed if he does go up there and he does talk semi normal I want to know what the hell stack of nootropics and shit they have <laughs> yeah. on what yeah. kind of miracle <laughs> drugs are they putting this guy on? I know right if he could talk straight I mean yes yeah, <laughs> science is speaking, crazy speaking of nootropics I all you know. Do you, do you guys have lessons in life that you never learn? Do you guys have those? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I have a few of those, yeah. You know, where it happens and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah there's that you're lesson. Like, again? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll remember next it time. It comes yeah. back. You know. Anyway, so I was on the internet and I was like, you know, looking up exotic uh, nootropics and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this company <laughs> this sells. Exotic what? Uh, just nootropics. And so I'm like, you know, like this weird stuff, right? So I'm like, oh, look at that. I could, fi- I could get this. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. 
So I ordered some and, uh, you know, came in the mail. So I'm all pumped. Which insect is this from? Um, I don't even want to say, You know what? I, I'm not going to say what it is. You know why? Because there's, yeah, I realize you're going to make a, money off of it. <laughs> well, not just that. Yeah, we're not sponsored yet. Yeah. No, there's there's a segment of listeners that is that will do it I, because I did it. They'll do it because they're crazy like I am. Sure. And I'm not going to let them sure, do it. Sure, sure. So uh, anyway, I proceeded to give myself a migraine for 24 hours because- <laughs> Oh my god! I took now. Did you figure out later on what was in it that caused it? Well, I knew that's. I never get headaches, so I knew it. Uh, I took some. Oh, was it like the synthetic nootropics? Yeah, yeah, they're all. Oh, those yeah. ones. The that's synthetic. The stuff that, yeah. yeah, I took some, and I'm like, I think I feel it. Let's try more. And I took more. <laughs> and then, like an hour and a half later, I was like, Ooh, that might have been too much. I can feel my teeth. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I had a headache all day. So, yeah, I know. Stupid. I know, dude. I got to figure that out. I got to figure this, this problem out. Oh. I had, yeah. a, I had a moment this weekend. Uh, you know when you have those moments where, like, your your life flashes before your eyes? No. Yeah, dude. Or, and it always, if or it's- uh, well, now that you're in your 40s, let me get you slipping in the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It was kind of like that. It was kind of like a moment. Like that. So I'm, you guys have heard me, remember I told you guys, like, there's this- the big trend of coming back of like super baggy stuff again. And, yeah. and I, and I bought these sweats that was a collab with Stussy and Nike and they're like huge. So I never wear them out. They're like overly, they're huge clown pants and they weren't cheap. Right. So, but they're comfortable. Why'd you buy them? Because they're Stussy and Nike sweats. I love both of those companies. Okay. And All so right. I wanted to, I didn't know what they were going to be when they yeah. got, when they showed up and they showed up. Yeah ginormous it's way so, bigger than you thought way bigger way big i mean and the and the, dr the drawstring i pull it all the way in and it's like hangs down to my all the way down to my yeah it's like i have to like double knot it it's, it's ridiculous right but they're comfortable and i paid a lot of money for them so i fucking wear them around the house right so it's my my comfortable sweats that i don't give a shit i wear them with my crocs how about that you know say so, oh my oh god, god. Like, oh my god. Around, yeah I'll walk around in my house so many that. erections right now i'm not going it. out in public in it right, right? so right. anyways i've got those sweats on and I'm, uh, we're having company come over. So I'm, I'm, I've got one of those blowers, right? So I'm blowing the backyard and the, uh, the fucking fan sucks up my drawstring. Whoa. And, and so <laughs> of the Whoa! pants? Yeah. And then it pulls it into my, <laughs> I have, I can't remember the last time I screamed like a girl. Like that, yeah, because <laughs> it because it sucked it in so right up yeah, so it crotch. pulled my crotch and it pulled the thing at the same time, and obviously I'm gonna be, I would have been okay, but just the thought of like a, a motor going yeah, and then it getting yeah. pulled into my crotch and I couldn't control. Oh man, I screamed. Like, do I let it go? Or is oh, like, let it keep going. <laughs> yeah. hey, imagine imagine if it got stuck, he couldn't turn it off. Yeah. Trying to explain it to his neighbor. Yes, <laughs> but, yes, yeah. that's how big they are. They're massive. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. How much are they up there, Doug? Yeah. What's that price? 120 bucks. 120 bucks, yeah, huh? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm not gonna throw them away. So I'm, yeah. I'm wearing. I'm yeah. wearing them. They're and they're, they are comfy. They're just. I just. I'm just picturing it's stuck. You're trying to tell your neighbor for help, and he's like, "Wait a minute. Why are you? No. Why, why is the blow? Oh over? my god." But you know, no, it's no, like, it's the draws thing. I swear, yeah. did not. I mean, it didn't even. It, it didn't even dawn on me as a possibility, right? I'm not thinking about yeah. this this motor catching something in my on my clothes. But yeah, it got the drawstring and it sucked it in and it pulled pulled it for, towards me and then pulled my oh. hips towards it and I I screamed like a girl, dude. Wow. <laughs> Do you have a gas powered one or electric? I have electric one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Those man, those electric ones are good now. They're not bad. No, uh, they're good. Yeah. I have both. Uh, there's a mine part runs out about halfway through my property, so I, I went to gas. Uh, yeah, yeah, Put gas. I'm like, you know, CO2 for your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. W -S. I'm looking for one that runs on coal. If you guys can find yeah, one, yeah, that I, makes I so for that. yours. I would have a gas one. They make ones cool now too. My buddy has the like the back. Backpack one, yeah, like, it's yeah. a gas powered. Bro, how old are we? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's, I get excited about that kind of shit. Just because it's loud, it's like yeah. I'm between out of the house, that, dude, between that, like directions and like how to barbecue something. Yeah, you know what I'm, I'm like, have oh, you ever bro, seen I'm such a loser? Now, have you ever dude? seen the attachment? Yeah. You take a blower and you. I don't know if, how, if people make this. You could put a toilet paper roll at the end of the blower and you turn the blower on and it blasts. Toilet paper straight out, and you can like toilet yeah, paper so someone. Yeah, see, toilet paper uh, trees. Yes. No way. Oh, it's yeah, amazing. That's a hack. For no sure. way. It's amazing. Pull that up. Let me see yeah. that. that is Kids have figured that oh, bro. out. Although, so TP. You're, when you're teeping at night, you're supposed to be quiet. So a blower. <laughs> woo, like yeah. at one in the morning. With Dead your, giveaway. Yeah. Yes. But it would be fun with your kids. Imagine your kids running around, you blast uh, them with it. I mean, so, I mean, did you guys, well, I, went through, I went through a TP phase, right? We used to TP houses. So Yeah, look, oh. see? Wow. And it just shoots it out, dude. I've seen people do that before. It's fun. So uh, you do you tape it? How do you attach it? I have no it? idea. How do you attach I, I it to know. the- I have no idea. 
It's got to be easy though, but I have no idea. There's a lot of videos on it, so it's obviously a thing. I didn't even know this was a thing. Yeah, I don't know. What made you? How did you find it? How did you find it? Flip it on there. I saw a video of it a long time ago because this guy went into a room with his buddies and then he just blasted his friends with it. And it was hilarious. Yeah, because it's, I mean, I feel like I would take like a, you know, those rollers for paint. Yes, I think that's what they use. And then tape it on there. And then I think it's the roller, a paint roller that they, yes, it is. See? Oh, hey. That's exactly. Look at Justin's MacGyver. By the way, people don't know MacGyver is looking you, at How did you know to do that? I wouldn't even have thought to do that. Yeah, see? Oh, God. I don't know. I was just DUA. thinking of something that's like hanging hey, look out. At, that's, that's us right there. Look at the dad. Logical. Like, his wife's like, honey, what are you doing outside? Making a video. Shut up. <laughs> I'm, making YouTube, I'm making a YouTube video. <laughs> I mean, look at these guns. But it shoots far. Uh, yeah, I want to see how far it goes. Oh, it goes far. Look. Look at that. Wow. See? He just... That's that's a good time. That's hilarious. I mean, that's a little... People are pretty That's pretty clever. No, it's not. That's fun, dude. I mean... The originally I thought okay that's clever because you like you, you said, just don't like wasting toilet paper. No, I yeah, yeah I do have a thing true. about that too. But I mean, where would you actually use that? Like Who knows? The- <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun, I don't Adam. Think, yeah, just lighten up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good well, time. your your original idea did get me thinking. Like, okay, yeah. I remember TP? being yeah. TP, so but- so you were were you a big TPer? Yeah, yeah. We were. How we- many houses do you think you've oh done in your God. life? My life? Yeah. Wow. More than ten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've done ten on a week on a weekend. Oh my God. Yeah, that many? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely more than ten. Really? Probably, le- probably less. Less than a hundred. Le- I've, ne- I've never TP'd a house. Really? No. Really? Oh, we should do that. No. Maybe we'll do this weekend. <laughs> I think you <laughs> go to jail as a maybe, maybe we'll hey, be Doug's go, house. Hey, would you go to jail as house with me this weekend? As as an adult man, would you go to jail if you got caught? No. I don't think they would ever bust me that hard for that. You think they'd just be pissed? So I, yeah, I've I've only egged houses, but I've which never by the way that like ruins paint and that's like that's really worse. bad. Yeah, that's yeah, worse than doing TP. Worse. TP you, is just like a, a headache, right? TP'd? I've TP'd, but not not a lot. I mean, we did a few. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't realize part, it was that many. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that many. I didn't I didn't think it was a lot. So wh- how do people get out of their tree? That's the hard part, right? Yeah, when you, yeah. When a tree yeah, gets that makes up. it hilarious. It's because it's a pain in the ass. You know? <laughs> Most people got it up there for like a week or two. The wind or the rain blows it. You know. So, oh yeah. wow, yeah, that yeah. sucks. Do you use uh, like like good toilet paper so it sticks <laughs> around longer? Use whatever you get your hands on. Oh, okay. When you're yeah. a kid, it was whoever's house you were at. You know, what I'm saying it's wherever your your parents or whoever you were staying at. Yeah, yeah it's just the, it's I don't know. Yeah, it's just a prank. You're just trying to get a reaction. I think the one that's really like mean is like so you tie the shoes and then you throw them up there and then they never get them back. I've seen that. I thought that's supposed to mean something. I thought that was when, when a kid died in the ghetto. Isn't that what it's supposed to mean? Wow. Really? Yeah. That just made it definitely sad. Definitely didn't. Yeah, yeah. So look when up, a kid dies. Look up, look up uh, Boys in the Hood. Wasn't that from Boys in the Hood where that was originally from? No. Was it? Yeah, I thought so. I think so. So yeah. when your buddy dies, you throw his shoes up there? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It, it, it's supposed to mean something. How, maybe one of my hmm. my guys over here could internet search. I've, I've poured a few forties uh, out. You know? No, you didn't. <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys that we? Get, so I got they. They actually they put us in the the newspaper because we were. Um, so we did. Uh, this was during election time. So we went around, and you know, during election time, you have all the signs, right? And everyone puts in their yard, like yeah. whatever. So we went around, and like we had three three cars, right? Trucks and bra- oh, two, hold bra- on. linked to organized crime, signifying the location of gang turf. Oh. Commemorating oh, the death shit. of a gang member See? or a non-gang member who lived in the area. So it was. I told you the the shoes are also rumored to mark a spot for drug deals. Oh. Wow. Well, now we know. Sorry. So now people see stuff like that. This and they just like, do I would, it. Like, yeah. It's like <laughs> suburban, like idiots, like just throwing shoes. Yeah, I knew it meant. I knew it meant something. I didn't remember what it was. Yeah. So, what, so what you? So, so time. we went around and we 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 had like a Bronco and two trucks and we we collected as we went around our town, right, which is a small town, and we just like stole all these signs from people's yards, and then we went and put them all in this girl's yard, like this one of these, one of our friends, right. Mm-hmm. That we know. And we put them all in her yard. The, the people, obviously the people that are running for, you know, office or that were so pissed about oh, it. Yeah, that's they, theft. they spent money on, on putting a, a reward out for the site. And it was, it said, I still have the newspaper clipping. I'll bring it in. Sometime. And they never caught you guys. Yeah, of course they never caught us. Wow. The sign thieves. Yeah, I mean, it was a friend who we did it to, and I don't think she was in, in any intention to rat us out or like that. But that was uh, the first uh, first case of election interference in your town. 
<laughs> Look what it's become, dude. Yeah, yeah, the first yeah, yeah, yeah. We, start, hey, we started voter hey, fraud. It was the Biden, it was it's the butterfly effect. Then Biden got yeah. like oh, activated. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Oh, exactly uh, how we planned. Hey, spe- so speaking of kids, I had oh. my the last official. Oh, this is uh, the last one. Father daughter dance. Oh, I'm gonna do it every year anyway, and I I, I think the school she's gonna go to. How do you do it anyway? Might what have it. Like every year, uh, I'll take her out and say this is our, our oh. date. Oh, okay. So yeah. now so it's just not going to be with a group. Yeah, we'll yeah. be an official dance. Well, I actually, talked, maybe you'll get some dads. Involved. I talked to some of the dads, and they yeah. were like, we're, "We're down to do it too." Okay, uh, but I mean, this is since preschool. Since preschool, I've I've made it such a big deal, and it's such a special day for. Now this was my the biggest you went though, right? You did a limo, you did everything. I got a big ass limo for fourteen people. Yeah, they, you know the girls it, and everybody had a blast. The girls were there; they were singing music in there and having a great time. Do you guys know they don't put sunroofs on limos anymore? Do you know that? Oh, uh, why? Because people have been yes, dude. Getting into because we were in there, there, and one of the dads was in the back, and I just uh, James, a good he's a buddy of mine, were laughing, cracking up, and he's like, "Hey, maybe we could stick out, put her, come out the you know the the sunroof when we pull up to the dance or whatever." But it was an emergency hatch, you know. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, yeah. "Oh, don't pull that, bro." Yeah, so how many how many dads? How many girls did you go? Uh, it was uh, I think. I want to say six and six or seven and seven. So like 12 or 14. Oh, so you had a full limo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Full on limo. Okay. We went to dinner first um, and we're getting now and you know, we're all wearing it. So the, the dance was Barbie themed because remember it's elementary up to eighth grade. So mostly for the elementary kids, but we all did it pink, like shirts and ties and the girls had pink dresses on and we get it, you know, walking to, you know, Santana row and people are like, what are you guys doing? And I'm like, we're not old creeps. These are our daughters, <laughs> daughters, father, daughter. <laughs> it's, dance. It's- you know, but we had a we had a good time. I feel like that's that's enough of a game. I would think it looks obvious. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. do you uh do you like the dads? What yeah, the dads? yeah, cool guys. I don't we don't hang out outside of you know events like this. Yeah. Um, but no, great guys. Um really, really nice. Everybody's very involved. You know what's sad is that a lot of schools don't do these dances because a lot of fathers are not present. That's what that's that's sad to think about. That's right? the reason yeah. why? That's it. That's it. Yeah, because they'll do a father daughter dance and they'll be like Thirty percent of the girls, oh, man. they won't have someone yeah, that can take them. Yeah. I didn't. So, did you have that? I didn't have a father daughter dance in school. I don't remember I don't ever having anything like that. Girls, is it a popular <laughs> thing? <laughs> just, the, you you were, I just grew up in all dude houses. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Did you, Doug? Did you do father daughter dance? No, I'm not a daughter. First off, well, you have a daughter. No. daughter. <laughs> you would be the father. In this no, situation. She, no, actually, <laughs> you never know nowadays, Adam. Yeah, I know. It's like, you, know? you got to be clear. You would no, be the dad no. In this so, uh, no, Brianna never had uh, that at her school. Yeah, so. yeah I, I, I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, so until lot, you. Yeah, so I've heard about them. Yeah, yeah, so I guess that's the reason why a lot of schools do it is because there's not a lot of present. Um, oh wow. Yeah, which is kind of sad. It's but sad. you know, this school, the, the, the everybody's super involved. The parents are all super involved. We pull up to the you know to the school because they really they really wanted to pull up to the school on the limo so of they course they did yeah and it's like a big deal and we all get in and just have fun it was it was awesome man it was mm-hmm. it was uh, emotional for me because when i was there uh you know my daughter's and she'll go off with her friends and hang out until there's like a, a dance that the dad and the daughter's supposed to do or whatever but otherwise it's just me and the dad's hanging out and then her and her friends and I was there and there's all these little, you know, there's all the way from kindergarten up, right? Yeah. So I see these little girls running around and my buddy John is there. He's got a little tiny one and a little old. He's got a seven-year-old and I think a, uh, like a five-year-old. And I saw them playing. And I just remember like yesterday when my daughter was, you know, four years old or five years old, you know, running around dancing, doing that. And I'm like, oh my God, it's the last one, dude. It was really, yeah. it, was, it was nice. So what do you, okay, so what you get to this dance or wait, I'm assuming you guys probably do dinner. First. We went to dinner first. You guys go to dinner yeah. and then you all climb back in the limo. Then you go to the school where the dance is yep. probably at. Yep. Yep. And then what are you doing for, you're not dancing most of the time, are you? No, no. Uh, they'll do like, like a couple, like, all right, get your dad, you know, whatever. Here's a dance with your dad type of deal. But otherwise it's the, the, the girls are all dancing and having fun. And, and you guys are just like chaperoning at that point. Yeah. The guy, like, the dads are just sitting, there's tables. Do they there's teach candy, any moves there's or anything? There's food. There's like booths, like uh, picture booths. Yeah. So we did some picture booth stuff. There wasn't any like uh, like oh, super overprotective dads or are you that dad? <laughs> well, it's it's all dads you're, with you're their both. daughters in there. So we're all like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That. That's what I mean. Are you like, are there super, are, like, are oh, you that? Like you that, were the super over, overprotective no, dad. Like that. Everybody's like oh, that? Yeah, everybody's yeah, like that. Well, me, I don't know. Me mugging the kids walking up. No, like, not like, kids. A, like a boy trying to ask There's your, no boys in there. Oh, so it's yeah. literally just the girls and the dads. Yeah. Oh, so I assume like. Oh, hell no. 
Oh, <laughs> so you know, you, could you so, imagine father daughter uh, dance? But the boys, the could boys come would get and dance with your daughter. Yeah. That would so be my a bad my niece mix. Danielle, right, Jerry's yeah. daughter, they had theirs this weekend. But it wasn't a father daughter. No, it, it was, was a no- dance. It was a normal dance, yeah. and so uh, that's what I was, uh, So it's not like that. No. There's not other boys. That's what I meant by overprotective yeah. too. I thought like you have to watch other you just boys. Just like chaperoning at that point. No, right, you think the girls would want their dads there while they're trying to dance? No, I just that's why I'm confused. I'm asking questions. I had it didn't make sense to me. It was just dads and daughters. And then some of the moms that help out with the like organizing. Uh, That's it. And so they're like they're dancing with their girlfriends. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then it's not all. Weird. I thought I was like, man, that'd be tough, you know, as a dad. Like, oh no, daughters in a little short dress. Oh and you no, got boys hitting on her. Oh so hell like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a disaster. Uh, <laughs> uh, my I asked Danielle how it went. So she, I, I pushing some, kids. Some down. boy asked her to dance, and she said no. I got all mad at her. Why'd you say no to him like that? I'm a poor guy. Oh, he's got a crush on me. He's always trying. Good to for hit. her. You no, yes. dude. No, no. Come on. Yes. You no, know, the courage it takes for that poor guy exactly. to go ask her for a dance. I mean, you know he's him? building character for him. <laughs> I'm curious about that kid. He'll make him stronger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Bill's character, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah fuck yeah. that kid. Maybe he'll be good sales one day. <laughs> yeah, he will. <laughs> oh, sucks, huh, buddy? <laughs> uh, you better go home. Got to refine <laughs> your oh, approach. Yeah, dude, here's, uh, here's one. You're not going to like this stat that I put. It's on my notes. And since we're talking about uh, daughters, women, stuff of like that, the average. A uh, 23 year old woman has slept with more men than the 53 year old woman today. Wow! Uh, yeah, isn't that crazy? But how many how many people is that though? What do you mean? I don't know. The, I don't know. Oh, you mean how many? <laughs> yeah, what's the number? Oh, because what know. if it's like two versus one? Or I don't something? know. Maybe you could look at it. no. Come on, no. the average mm-hmm. average 23 year old has slept with more men than the 53 year old woman. Yeah. Wow. wow. So I doubt it's two, one yeah. or two. <laughs> I doubt it's that. Yeah. But that's how much that number has creeped up for for young. Although women. it's dropping. It is yeah. trending the other way. Yeah, it's I, dropping. Slowly, right? Yeah, but it's not, it's because kids aren't hanging out with each other. That's the reason why it's dropping. Yeah, we, well, we speculated on this, right? Yeah. What, what are some of the reasons why we think that is, right? You know, one of the um, most interesting conversations I've heard around this particular topic was um, around birth control and how for the first time in history ever, actually human history, We've been able to separate sex, effectively separate sex from the potential of pregnancy. And we never accounted for what that could potentially mean besides the fact that, oh, now you're not going to get pregnant. Hmm. Like what else could this possibly mean for us societally and psychologically? Yeah. Interesting. There's really interesting data around it. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like, uh, let me think. Okay. Here's an analogy. Imagine if we invented a way to where food would never make you overweight, right? Like no matter what you ate, you would never gain weight. Everybody would cheer. Yeah, yeah. But now that we've eliminated that natural potential fear or barrier, yeah. what could that potentially lead to, right? Yeah. So so that's like, it's like, it's kind of like that, right? So although having a kid isn't the same as heart disease. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, yeah. yeah, interesting. Did, I mean, you, did you guys see, uh, you know, Sean Strickland, who's the MMA yeah. champ? Did you see the uh, UFC, uh, the uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, I did. the influencer I did. that he got in the ring? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I, I guess that. he was talking crap about I, him, and then he sparred with him. Yeah. I saw him run into Machine Gun Kelly and like- I did see that Call too. him a weirdo and yeah. everything, and it got all- <laughs> You know, when people have zero understanding and appreciation of- uh, 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 pro fighters. I, I, they really do. I think that people think because they're big, like big dudes. I've seen, uh, what's his name? Bradley Martin do this on, on Instagram oh, where yeah. he thinks he could, how about in a street fight? Oh, you're only 150 pounds. You would get your ass kicked so fast. You would yeah. get put to sleep well, it's a, because it's they're a, pro fighters. Yeah, they're pros. Yeah. I mean, that's like it's what People they, don't know. Like, I think the average eat, man- sleep, and breathe. That's the average like, man that's needs like to go being to, ignorant enough to think that like you're going to go beat a, a football player at his sport or a basketball player yeah. who's been playing their sport their whole life. And it's like, oh, because you're you're fast. Yeah. yeah. That's why tall. I love pros you're, versus you're super Joes. Tall, so you go beat an NBA player. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, you guys remember that show, Pros yeah. versus Joes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would love that for MMA. Yeah, yeah. Just get any dude off the street and like- because, yeah, it's, it's it's silly to even think that you're going to do well. The average man needs to go to one jiu-jitsu class. Just go to one jiu-jitsu class, pick the smallest guy in there that's a black belt, and then you will leave a different man. Yeah, You will leave very humble in a nice way well, and just realize just how, you know, how, uh, how tough you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. So what so what happened? You guys didn't describe uh, So he I guess Sean sparred I sparred with him. Yeah, he sparred I, and I think he was talking running he, his he, running his mouth on social media, 
basically called him out and he said he met him met him and they oh, actually met him. oh yeah they met him in the ring and then he and he's talking to him in the in the first round right he's like talking to him like letting him swing on him and stuff like oh, that okay. and he's like you know you know this was a bad while idea he's, right? while he's trying to hit him Sean yeah. Strickland's like you can't hurt me you can't do anything like, yeah. he's talking shit and he's like he's yeah. kind of like slapping him with it, like a little bit he goes you know oh, you're gonna get like, hurt right okay. now right like and, and then he turns it on and, and then he turns it on and just starts to pound in Amazing. the defense of the kid though I mean he didn't he didn't knock him down well the ref stepped in before he could yeah I know but yeah I know but. He did handle a couple of punches, yeah. so I mean, you could tell. Actually, the other guy had had some sort of boxing. Like it wasn't like he's never put gloves on. You can mm -hmm. tell he had mm -hmm. some sort of. Did you see what he said mm -hmm. to about uh, what's that dude's name? Uh, YouTube, he was a YouTube star. He's been boxing people now. He's a decent fighter, but Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Did you see what he said about Jake Paul? No, who said that? Oh, so what Sean Strickland said? No, no, about, he said you're a troll. You're a massive troll, and the, I can't remember the exact. Maybe we can find the post. It's uh, Sean Strickland, uh, Jake Paul, um, maybe tweet or post. Some along the lines of um, you're bad because you're there's a whole generation of kids now that that is like, oh, I can make money just by being a troll. I can make a lot of money uh, just by talking crap and, mm. and being kind of this. this so uh, now it's funny you say that because I didn't watch the full interview, but I want to watch it. I, you know that I've been showing you George who came from uh, George Janko. I think. Yes, yes, yes. His and he just interviewed Jake Paul. Oh, did he? And he, he has a ton of respect for him. And yeah. supposedly, like that's like this character that he built online yeah. for attention and all this stuff like that. And supposedly behind closed doors, he's like this really great guy who's and so I want to listen to the interview. I saw the clips of it. It looks really interesting. Just a different take on him, right? Because he's branded himself as this problem child. Yeah. And he's and he's used that like as a and so it's like it seems to be this big marketing ploy. And deep down he's like supposed to be like this really super nice I guy. I mean, it is. I mean, it is. It's but. definitely effective, but yeah, it, I guess. I guess that's just sort of like looking at society in general. <laughs> it's like you kind of got to look at what we're drawn to, you know. Like if it, if the the trolls are getting all the attention, you do know, your gotta, boys like them? Do they follow? Um, do they follow the the Paul brothers and stuff like that? Are they not into their stuff? They're not really into their stuff. I think they kind of see they see it as I, I guess. They look at them as douchebags for the most part. Is really? Kind of my impression of them, which I don't really have that much of a problem with, you know, the Paul brothers. I kind of understand what they're doing and like why they're trying to get the attention they're getting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think who they, they, they're in like Mr. Beast a lot and like kind of like they're, I don't know, the, the influencers are a little more altruistic, you know, the ones that are kind of like, mm. they're, they're, they definitely lean more towards those types of uh, yeah. uh, YouTubers. Yeah. But they're not like, they're, they're, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing because they're not really in the main, like what what most kids like in terms of influencers. They're not like these aren't their idols. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So here's what he said, and I thought it was a well. I thought what he said was very interesting. Who, who's this? Sean Strickland. Oh, okay. He said, "I want to conclude." So they're going back and forth talking shit because Jake Paul offered him a million dollars to spar. Oh wow! And film it. So I, I, I he offered him a million dollars to spar and then to whatever. And so Sean, and they went back and forth and Sean said, I want to conclude this. I want you all to understand the phenomenon that is Jake. You're a professional troll. You fight retired small MMA fighters because you're a troll. But the worst part of it all is that you're a cancer. You inspire people to accomplish nothing, to be nothing. You inspire people to be trolls because you were successful at it. Jake Paul, you might be rich, but you're not a man. You byproduct of society that has fallen. Your trolls will rally around you and be inspired to be like you but understand one thing, you and your troll army are not my equals. Enjoy your virtual world with the with the understanding that you're a cancer on this country. Money will never buy you dignity. Damn. Dude. I mean He wrote that? He, that's yeah. A, that's from Yeah. So I mean he made some points. Maybe a little chat GPT help on that. <laughs> that was really good though. That was pretty good, dude. Yeah. That was I mean, he made some, you know, he made some good points. Yeah, you know though too, like I mean, I don't know how many times have we been so like until I meet someone now, like I'm not, like I'm extra careful about of course, you know, feeling of course. like putting a strong opinion about somebody until right. I get a chance to sit in front of them, do an interview. It's the whole character talk, that totally about, right? It's the whole character. That, right. Yeah. And so, that guy you mentioned, what was his name again? George. Uh, yeah. He does a really good job of, of digging into that. Really good. Super interviews. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, I'm telling you right now, he is up and coming as far as like interviewers. Chris Williamson and George, I think Janko is how you say his last mm -hmm. name. Is that right, Andrew? Is it Janko? Is that how I say it? Yeah. Okay. 
the, the, they're two of the better interviewers yeah, yes. in the game for sure. Right. I know everybody is huge yeah. Joe Rogan fan. Joe Rogan's good. Don't get me wrong, but Joe Rogan can be a little bit long winded for me. Three hours on every interview is just it's too it's much. It's his own style. Yeah. You have to. He I have to. Style. I have to really be into that one guest to pull me in to all to get to that point. Right. It take he takes an hour and a half to get to deep conversations. It's, sometimes. it's more. It's less an interview, more like it's uh, a hang, hanging out. Yeah, it's a hang. Yeah, it's a it's totally a different, different style. Would not have existed. Which I totally. I love it. But yeah, it's a different. It's a totally different monster. Well, you have long drives. So yeah, I do. I got, I, yeah, I do. I have yeah. to listen to long. Form. Yeah, you're the only one I think who can't, who does out of any of us that actually finish Rogan interviews. Yeah, right? I probably go back. I uh, I think I finished him one and, interview of his. Dude, yeah, sp- him and uh, Jordan Pierce. Speaking of driving, so this weekend I'm not going to give away too much, but this weekend we went away to create not this weekend but last week to create a new program, and we do this every once in a while, right? We go off and. We'll get a house somewhere, somewhere somewhat secluded so we can really just dive in and, and just get creative. So we were all supposed to head up there. You guys all went up before <laughs> Doug and I. Yeah. yeah. So Doug and I took off together and we're driving up and I'm using navigation and it's over the hill. It's over in what town was that? SoCal? SoCal. Okay. Yeah. So like at the top of the hill, whatever. So we're driving and I'm following the navigation and it's been storming. It's been rainy and stormy <laughs> lately. My navigate without realizing it, my navigation took me through. I don't know what it was, but yeah. it, it must have been a shortcut. You, but- yeah, you took off early and basically went through all the back roads to get there. Yes, so yeah. we're going up, and it's sketchy, bro. So Doug and I are in the car, and it's sketchy already. The road doesn't look good. It's kind of muddy. Whatever. <laughs> we're thirty minutes into backwood driving oh where you can't even make a u-turn it would take me 25 <laughs> times yeah. to make a u-turn these are like single lane roads yes. and everything yeah so it's like to, just to make a u-turn would have been because the other side's a cliff right yeah. so we're like driving we get up we're driving up and i'm like oh you got to be kidding me there's a sign road closed i'm like god oh, like how are we gonna turn around <laughs> what are we gonna do so doug's like you know me and i'm like just, just go around doesn't look like there's anything wrong I'm like all right so we go around right <laughs> around the road close sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> went around the road close sign drive up and down there's a there was a down power line on the side, right? Oh but it looked okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> looked okay. So I'm like, wasn't all the way down. Just wasn't all the way down. Uh, it was draped oh, across. Was uh, it was, no, 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 no spark, nothing like that. <laughs> but it was it was holding. Uh, a no, not tree. yet, not yet. This okay. was the first one. Oh, the first one. Yeah, the first one. Oh, where it looked like the the road was kind of washed out, so we kind of went around it or yeah. whatever. Driving around, like, okay, that was kind of sketchy. I'm a little like you know, low key anxious right now, but yeah. whatever. So we keep going. Then we come up another sign, road closed. I'm like, ah, oh, like let's go around this one. So we go around, we come up, <laughs> and there's a big ass, bro, big ass tree fell on a power line, and the power line is supporting it, and the tree is going across the road, and it's literally suspended <laughs> you're, you're, by the power you're, line. You're drive under it. So I'm like, like now listen, to turn around, it would have been hard. Plus, it's already been already 40 minutes into the drive. You're committed. I'm like, ah, oh, dude, what are we gonna do? You're so Doug's like, let me get dude. out, let me see if you can clear this. So he walks up to the tree, and he's like. Like, you know, giving me the hand signals. I barely scrape underneath it or whatever. Oh, my. Bro, while I'm dri- while I'm going, I'm like, if this thing falls, we're done. How embarrassing. Yeah. What an embarrassing way to die. Because <laughs> I don't want to turn around. <laughs> but then we made it up and we were, we were okay. That was sketch, dude. I don't know how people live up there. We can't let you just, like, go on your own. Yeah. You know, we, we need, like, to, like, have you next to our car like oh, and doug's too passive to be that navigator. Yeah. did you, you want to turn around doug? Doug, doug's like oh, okay you know wherever no, we were like, no i was i was committed to getting there yeah, yeah <laughs> dude, like, i deal we'll with that out. stuff all the time dude you know it's just one of those things it's you part of living in the country man. how yeah. do people live up like if that's that, part of it you can't get out there's other ways you know you get creative but yeah there's i mean there's a lot of roads that just shut off and sometimes i that's like the few times a year i have to call and be like hey sorry guys i can't leave my house wow you know Wow. It happens. Yeah. But that was a bad storm. That was a pretty bad. Well, for us, it was a bad storm. Yeah. And then it was freezing. Did I tell you guys, it was uh, It was like, Jessica sent me a picture. It was below 40, which for here is cold. It's like 38 degrees. My son goes outside. I told you guys he's a polar bear, right? He's, there's something interesting about him in cold. He yeah. likes to be really cold, likes cold yeah. baths, everything. Yeah. He's outside, barefoot, short sleeves, eating a popsicle. She sends me a picture. <laughs> She's like, check out your kid, dude, outside wow. right now. It's like, cold. What is up with that kid? He runs awesome. hot, man. I mean, oh, I don't know. If- Max runs hot, too, but Katrina's in denial about it. <laughs> so oh, my poor son. bundle him up. Yeah. And he's yeah, like, he's like sweaty. I'm just like, <laughs> how many more puddles of sweat this kid got to wake up in before you realize he's, he runs exactly. hot like his dad? He runs well, hot. There's been, we've had him up at, when we've been at the Truckee house, and you know, I like it so cold, right? So I, I shut the heater off in that room. I open up the window. Yeah. So it's cold by 
by the middle of the night, you can see br your breath. And I'll be all bundled up under the covers because it's nice and cold in there. And Max will k have kicked the covers off and be laying out in just his, his underwear and a t-shirt like outside the blankets. Does he's, he go to does yeah. he go to bed like no problem? Or do you sometimes have to lay in there with him? No, he's he's solid now. He's dude. all good now. Yeah. So he's what about when he was like three? He's been pretty good for a long time. Like I said, we did a really good job of of training. Even like when, so if I lay with him, right? So like I, I, I he, he, what he'll do is this. So Katrina's routine is she puts him down, right? And she's done that for a long time. And I, I'm downstairs, kind of cleaning some of that. But normally, what will happen if there's if it's a night where he just doesn't go right down after he gets read to, and so that she'll come down. And she'll be like, hey, he wants you to come say goodnight to him. And so then I'll come up, I'll give him a kiss, and then I'll lay with him for about two minutes, and, oh, okay. then, and then I'll walk away. Yeah, because lately, uh, really, now he's only three, three is he three and a half? He's, no, he's not even three and a half yet. But he he's having he's been having trouble, and he's it's, you know, poor kid. He'll say, I, "I I'm having trouble sleeping. I wish I could be like an adult. Adults go right to sleep. Like poor kid, you know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're laying in there with him, and you know, and then we lay there until he falls asleep. But the other night. Um, you know, we were doing this and I don't know if he's anxious or what the deal is. He's having trouble. So Jessica and I, and they're laying there with him and she's, and he's getting frustrated because he doesn't want us to leave. So he does this thing where he, he like, I'll, I'll read it. I'll tell him a story. Hmm. And then, and then he'll, he'll, I don't know why he does this. He lowers his voice when he's getting serious. Like, don't leave. <laughs> like, <what are> <laughs> I'm turns not in, sleeping. Turns into Batman. Yeah, I'm not sleeping. Don't leave. I'm like, okay, buddy. Okay. <laughs> So his mom was trying to get him to, to like take deep breaths, like to help calm himself yeah, down. Yeah. He's like, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to. So I'm like, hey, I got a story for you. So I made up a story about this garbage truck because he loves garbage trucks. So every yeah. story is garbage truck. Yeah. About this garbage truck that's scared to go to work. It's his first day at work. Yeah. So his boss teaches him how to breathe in through his nose and out through his mouth. So the whole story is the garbage truck doing that and then teaching other right, right. on his way to work. He teaches a bird to do it because the bird is scared. And the whole time, my son is copying me as I'm telling the story, right? Yeah, that's great. And it was such a great moment because my wife got to see how brilliant I was. Because yeah. she actually, <laughs> she sat there and as I started telling the story, yeah. she makes this face like, don't distract him. He needs to learn how to breathe deep. And I'm like, let me tell a story. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then halfway through, she's like, oh. Oh, I get what you're doing. You're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's let's, get, let's hurry this up so we can have some. The method to the <laughs> no, madness. But anyway, he, he relaxed and listened. But wait, what I'm going to try, and I haven't done this yet, is I'm going to try the Organifi Gold Juice with him. Mm. So I'm going to, because he'll love the taste. There's gonna, nothing in there he can't have, right? No, yeah. no. And it's all it's very relaxing. Make it nice and warm. Give him like half a dose. I or, didn't think about that. Max would love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he loves hot chocolate, so I, he would love to do that. Way yeah, yeah way better like than hot chocolate. Taste. That's not a chocolate bad, stimulating too. That's not a that's not a bad idea. I didn't even yeah. think. I didn't even. Think so of that. I'm gonna bring that out anyway. I haven't used it in a, in a little while. I'll go through spurts of using it regularly, and do you, I, it does. It works when you take when you drink it. You get nice nice calm sleep. Oh yeah, no, that's still one of my favorite mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. do you do you guys use the apps? Like have you heard me talk about them before, where it tells you like gro his uh, growth spurts? Yes. And his, I swear those things are accurate. Like, yeah. Weird, right? Because anytime, even still to this day, I didn't realize how it, how far it continues to go. Like in, in his age, like Katrina will be like, man, Max is just seems off. And, and then her and I were like, you know, when's the last time we looked at the app yeah. to see if like he's due for like, a, and it's like almost always. Yeah, you can always correlate it. Be like, oh, he was acting like a whatever. Yeah. Or he was yeah, know, these, cranky. And it's always those type of behaviors, right? It's like this, like if it's light type yeah. stuff or being connected well, to you. Well, what I think with Aurelius, what it is, is <clears throat> there's there's these childhood diseases. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but kids get these viruses. We all get them. One of them is called, I don't know what the actual term, the name of it is called slap cheek. And so basically the, re the reason why it's called slap cheek is one of the signs is they get really red cheeks that kind of look like a rash a little bit on their face. And that's the tail end of the virus. Mm -hmm. And what typically mm -hmm. leads up to that is either a fever or a lot of kids don't even get a fever. They just get cranky. So the little cheek thing popped up on him recently. I'm like, mm -hmm. he must've had this virus mm -hmm. and we didn't know. And now the, 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 the rash part comes out and now it's the tail end of it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping he'll be. Now you guys didn't go through as bad of a, uh, like getting sick phase as we did. Cause we put them in school so early. Yeah. Every parent that does what you do, they, they all talk about that. Yeah. Where you just, they get sick every There week. was a year there. There was like a year, I remember a year cool. straight where like, I remember Katrina and I, like it was like this massive celebration if we made like 10 days in a row <laughs> of like not fighting a cold or something. I remember like, God, when's this going to, but it's I like also remember people. dish coming home. Yeah, yeah. I remember people telling me that. They're just like, oh yeah, once you get them into school, like that's like, just be ready for that. And, and the schools, they take them, you know, they're like, unless they're like, I think it's like, they're throwing up or have a fever, then you, then you. Diarrhea. 
a fever. Yeah, there's like, like only yeah. a couple things, but there's like blowing snot and all. Like no, otherwise, they'd have no kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause exactly. So that's all. That's fair game. So you're. you're I wonder if still. teachers have some of the best immune systems because of that. Think about what they'd be exposed to. With they should. Kids. Yeah. I always thought that, that we'd be that way because of the gyms. Hospital I workers. thought that too. But I, I, I got sick a lot. Me too. You know why though? I think we got sick a lot. Why? Think about the gyms, the gym environment. There is zero sun. <clears throat> yeah. I, I bet you we were all low vitamin D because we were constantly indoors in the yeah. gym. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a big problem for oh. anybody. Oh, would, oh yeah. I would yeah. hate that. Yeah. So I, I supplement with vitamin D regularly and my vitamin D levels are in the middle. And I take 5,000 I use every day. And I'm in the middle. So imagine if I took nothing where I would be. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I still think, yeah, getting outside is is the remedy for a lot of this and like getting dirty and like being exposed to all the different bacteria. And like, I don't know. I feel like indoors is really where this this whole incubation of yep. uh, viruses and everything mm -hmm. else, like it's it's such a problem. And, and everybody's so drawn indoors now because of technology. Everything wants it's to only, keep you in. Bro, I wonder. Apple brutal. goggles, it's only going to get worse. Oh, well, it's they're, brutal. I know. The dude, goggles are. They're, that's, they're insane, dude. Bro, the theory, I just bought a bunch of shares of Apple because for oh, sure yeah. it's going to take over. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> well, you know, the listen to the all-in guys and they're talking about, they're going back and forth on just the, how brilliant it is. And one of the arguments, and there's nobody who's debating out of them that, that that's probably not healthy for society, right? Like, yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. not going to help with depression. It's not going to help with kids and communication. Yeah, like, what did Shamal said, does it come with a lifetime uh, subscription yeah. for S SSRI? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so none of them deny that, but like, like the, the thought constantly. is that it's going to completely like eliminate laptops. Yep. And I'd never thought of yep. that. Like, so imagine something that and how it's going to augment people's work. Yeah. Like yeah, how many yeah. jobs will be more efficient. Well, yeah. and you can be on the go and I know it's again with traffic and everything else. It'll be, it'll be and it gives you now a, a three dimensional world to be trained in versus in That's a two, right. two dimensional where you watch like a video or something. Right. So like yeah. now, like you could have, a surgeon or a mechanic yeah. or something the like that. skill level for everybody is going to increase crazy because, yeah. yeah, it's all programmed. There's going to be some know, really interesting, interesting applications to how this gets used. And, and it's it's definitely here to stay. And this is probably going to be, the, the obviously, the first. So scary. how do we get it off the goggles? Like Because I know that they're probably trying to think of ways. Oh, to this is version one. Yeah, I know. It's going to eventually be version. so small that it'll just be. Well, like either contacts or do they just, do they go the route of like having something that just is a projected, like, yeah. you know, holographic that you can interact with? What's I, it? I would prefer that. So, you, you, so the thing that's, what I didn't think about that makes it nice to have these goggles is that you're private now. So imagine when you're wait, oh, like so people aren't seeing what you're doing. Yeah, here. they can't yeah. see anything that you're doing. You have imagine you just have your keyboard out now, That's and I could be point. on Pornhub. I could be in my bank accounts. I could be doing things that are private yeah. in a public setting, and nobody has is the wiser of it. Where you can't do that stuff in public with your laptop. Yeah, like I someone. I don't think. By the way, I don't think you could get you can access uh, pornography on them yet. Oh really? You no. tried? I think no. I first time I tried. <laughs> yeah. No. He's like, let me so tell you. Make sure you do this. <laughs> no. I mean, that was just an example. No, no. I think in fact they purpose. They said no. They wouldn't allow it. Oh really? Yeah. Which of that's going to change, of course. Yeah. I'm sure that the yeah, market. There's too already strong. someone who's hacked yeah, into that. that <laughs> yeah, dude. And my point is, forget Somebody's that. Right. I just gave that as like a thing. A that nobody. Yeah. Somebody yeah. didn't want. Don't want to see. You don't want to be in a coffee shop watching porn. Let me ask you guys this: Could you see a future? Could you see a future in which if you're not wearing something like that, it's weird? Like you're in public and 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 not wearing them will be like, oh, what, is, I, what are you doing? I, well, yeah, just look at with the masks. Oh, that's exactly what I thought. You know like, how quickly not wearing a mask made you a pariah. Yeah, all of a sudden you're the one that's. I mean, the there's problem. no, there's going to be I'm no like, guilt attached to it the same way, so it won't be as crazy. But I do. I mean, this is what will push the whole divide of half and half, right? It'll what it'll be like is like literally like you'll you'll know someone's views on life just by whether they walk around wearing them or not. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Very similar to like if someone, you know, if you have a flag in front of your house now, it's like, it's almost like guaranteed, you know, who that person votes. Like Bro, how, weird. Cra how weird is that? That like, it's going to be like that where it's just, it's just one more For, signal on like how, what you, where you stand from a spiritual uh, context. All right. A spiritual yeah. standpoint, what we're doing is we are, separating ourselves more and more through the illusion of connection. It's literally a spiritual uh, twist. It's like, you're more connected now. You're actually not. Yeah. But you're more connected now, but you're not. So you're the, part, further the, apart. the part that I find that's going to be really Terrible. interesting, Sal, is that 
it it seems that and then listening to the all in guys as an example of this right you have all these kind of tech nerd dudes and investors that are like talking about how brilliant yeah. it is but then and, they're also dads but they're, they're, they're dads and they also recognize the 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 pitfalls of it too so the the interesting part is going to be how as a society we wrestle with that because i don't i think it's no long 10 years ago we were so unaware of the damages of social media and, yeah. and the addiction of these apps and things like that. Like that's no longer, now obviously there were some people that were privy to it and that were ahead of the curve, but like most people are aware of it now. And so being aware of that and then now seeing it, like how are you going to to, to manage that? Like, do you think are, they'll have laws where it's like, you're not allowed to use these in public? I do. I could see us, uh, I could see people wanting that, you know, even yeah. though that's a slippery slope too. But I could see, which is like what China does, right? Like where it's just like the kids can only use it till a certain time. And I could see that. And this is what we tend to do as a society. When we are too lazy to take control ourselves mm -hmm. and raise our children, we want the government to yeah. do it. And so I wouldn't be surprised if more and more stats come out about how dangerous yeah. it is. And so the government says, yeah. hey, we'll, we'll help you. Don't worry, mom and dad. Like we'll we'll shut it off so nobody can use it. Either by that, or the money's going to do the opposite. There's a this is a lot of money into this into this technology. You think the the government it may be the opposite where the government's like, no, we're not going to control any That's of this. That's going to be so weird if the like majority of people have goggles in their face. Yeah, you know, you just walk around everybody with goggles on their face. Look like dorks. Yeah, like it's it's well, gonna be so weird. Listen, to just, well, I, I here's my, well, first of all, that's not okay. One. <laughs> 50% of the society can't afford those. So it's not, not yet. Not yet. Not now. Well, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And then by that time, they won't be big goggles. So I don't, it'll I don't, be, but it'll still be weird yeah. to not have something that's sure. Augmenting. Sure. But I mean, uh, the reason why it's so weird to you right now is because one, it's so brand new to us Two, You see these big old clunky goggles, but the truth is by the time it becomes affordable for everybody, it ain't going to look nothing like that. No, it'll be, it will be either. You won't be able to see it. It'll be a contact or it'll be glasses. But think about what a disadvantage you'll be at, right? Where everybody around you <clears throat> has this augmented ability and you don't, and your friend's like, dude, look at that, that thing over there. And you're like, I can't see it. Like, what do you mean? You can't see it. Like it's too far. Oh, you don't have, oh yeah, you don't wear the thing, you know, whatever. You're weird, bro. You know, yeah. like you're going to, it's going to be weird. Well, I man. mean, it's, yeah. It, again, like if you get into it, there's a lot of really cool additions to it, right? Like I saw something where you could collect coins for like cleaning your house and they're all distributed around there and you're just basically gamifying like <laughs> chores and shit. That's actually kind of brilliant. It was brilliant. That I was is, like, I, wow. you know, my kids would be like, yay, you know, trying to get all the coins. Kind of wow. fucking brilliant. It, actually. It's, it's just like, it's so, it's just interesting. Cause now it's, it's a whole nother uh, part of our reality, our new reality that uh, we didn't foresee. And that's, Apple's one of those companies that it, you know it's going to stick. Like it's oh, not. Yeah. It's not like it's a uh, here today and then tomorrow. Everybody's going to be like, oh, I'm over. Well, it. imagine uh, you. Can, I mean, I think right now they already have this on them. Where, where can you put them on and then you could like augment the person you're looking at so they can look like yeah. someone else. Yeah. Huh? yeah. But w w imagine where that would go. Where you could literally everybody. You can make whoever you want look like whoever you want. That is strange. Yeah. The the. the I don't know. I don't. I don't know if humans are ready for the kind of power that technology is starting to unleash, which is literally I mean, you have can we, have anything have we ever you want. Been? Have we ever been? No. Really? Yeah. No. No. Nope. We tend to find a way to. I mean, that's just how we do it, right? We're yeah. going to push the limits and then get burned, yeah. and then we come back the other direction. <laughs> yeah. You see too the. Uh, uh, did you see the? Is it Hyundai? Hyundai that did the excavator. No. Did you see it? Oh no. yeah. Pull oh, up. Uh, pull that up looks Hyundai. sick. I know, right? Pull so up Hyundai, sick. Hyundai Escavator. Wait, Hyundai it's all or Hyundai? Futuristic. Is it Hyundai or Hyundai? Hyundai. You the car? Hyundai. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, the car company. Why are you saying it's so weird? How do you say it? Hyundai. Hyundai. Now, I can't you, say it right. You just anymore. said it three different ways. So which one is it? Hyundai. <laughs> I, I feel like I can't Hyundai, say it right is now. Is it Hyundai or Hyundai? It's Hyundai. Hyundai, Hyundai, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we all looked at. I mean, I'm all confused too now. But it's yeah, it's. Korean, right? Yeah, it is. All right, what's 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 the look at it? Thing? Pull it up. Have Doug pull it up. It's not my job to do that is stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. If we had goggles on, we would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd already yeah, be seeing it. I don't know if you were looking at it. Yeah, right Hyundai now. is how I always said. Hyundai. It. There yeah, you go. Yeah, Gosh, so you got me all weird. I mean, it's going to be all like uh, uh, controlled, right? So it'll be. What? Is it compact ex excavator? That's not it. No, no, it's not, not it. it. It's it's super futuristic looking. Yeah. Oh, okay. And put, what's it for? Put in electric excavator by Hyundai. Is it for like uh, just construction work? Yeah. Like, well, what yeah, the yeah. fuck else would you use? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You're just talking <laughs> Driving about, your kids like, to why school? Why are you into this right now? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm interested. And I've always wanted one to 
So you remember Start when we digging. were in in Park City at our place, and, yeah. the, and the guy had a control remote control little, you know, it was mini though, it was tiny. And so this is like a fucking super huge. And one. you're not in it. You're just controlling. No, it. yeah, yeah, you're not in it. Wow. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure it'll all be eventually AI driven, right? Where you tell it a project and then it just goes and does it. Wow. So I mean, between the houses being built themselves, I mean, we're not far away from this, some of this tech that's going to be pretty wild to see how much of a, a, a of the labor can be done. Um, you know, but there there you go. Let me see what this is. Was this a Super Bowl commercial? Is that why? No, no. This was this. I saw this actually last week sometime. No, that's still not it either. No, it's not it. Yeah, I don't know why you're having such a hard time. Well, it says next Andrew. generation electric excavator. So, oh yeah. yeah oh, here we go. It's like, put there you go. There you go. Yep. That's oh, that looks out of uh, like sci-fi movie. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks like out of Dune the, or something. So I thought it was crazy. Wow. Speaking of that, dude, Dune two coming out. Oh, I can't mm. wait. That does look good. March first, I think. Dune so. was, was a great. It's one of the only movies I've seen like three or four times. I've they did it. a fantastic job with the first one. They so did. Yeah. See, see this. Oh yeah. So you get the, the no, uh, no dump human trucks and wow. yeah, it's all okay. AI powered. That's cool. Wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Trippy, right? Yeah, that's really cool. Now, I mean, throw those on Mars and you're going to start building colonies, right? Oh, yeah. Do you think they're going to find artifacts on Mars from old humans, Justin? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. You do? Just yeah. look at, okay. There's that's actually where we came a from. way that- I, Humans? I, I heard sure. there's there's some way you we can escaped, search we anomalies. We Mars. You search anomalies uh, on Mars and then it like has like just- uh, thousands of images that uh, you have access to from, I think it's Hubble or one of those like, uh, what? yeah, satellites yeah, and, yeah. and rovers and things that they've You're so lucky you know there. us, Adam. We get to teach you all this cool stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, I haven't actually gone through it all, so yeah. I, it could be total BS, but like it, it sounded compelling. Yeah. All right. I want to give, uh, can we shout out the Arnold no. classic again? No. Why? No. All right, I'm going to do it anyway. No, you're not allowed <laughs> Listen, to do it. Listen, no. Arnold Classic, we're going to be there March 1st and 2nd. Friday the 1st from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., we're going to be at Pro's Gym in Columbus. Yeah, have we have we announced that? Yeah, we have We did it. one time. Oh, we did. We yeah, I want to say it again because it's coming up. Yeah. So if you're going to be at the Arnold Classic, uh, go to Pro's Gym uh, from 2 to 4 on March 1st. Do you sign up for that? Or Is you March 1st up? a Friday? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, Friday, March first. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, go. It'll got be awesome. Pros. Come, come say hi. Come say hi. Rub Adam's area smooth head. Codes. <laughs> Zbiotics is a probiotic for when you drink alcohol. Check it out. It is a probiotic that has been genetically modified to break down some of the negative byproducts of alcohol consumption. Acetaldehyde breaks it down in the gut. So the next day, I feel so much better when I drink Zbiotics before I drink. Alcohol. Anyway, go check them out. It is in its own category. There's no compound like it. It is patented. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump. And use the code mind pump24 for 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Eddie from Germany. Eddie, what's up, man? What up, Eddie? How can we help you? Hey, hey there, fellas. I uh, appreciate you having me on. You got it. Um... I guess first off, we'll start with the, uh, the obligatory thank yous. Um, what you guys do is pretty amazing. And uh, I find as a new trainer, uh, you guys are able to put into words things I've been thinking for a long time. So I really appreciate that. You've helped me a lot to uh, communicate better, as it were. Um, although I will say for the, uh, the new listeners, be careful how far back you go in the library. Uh, <laughs> for fun, I, I jumped back to episode one on Spotify. Ouch. And let me tell you, it was a way different experience. I, uh, <laughs> I visualize you guys like sitting around a tape recorder and like that 70s show in the basement. It's pretty close to that, <laughs> yeah. bro. It was That's pretty yeah. close to that. That's what happened. <laughs> it was pretty wild. <laughs> but definitely a good time. So appreciate you guys. Thank um, you. So I'll just jump right into it if that's cool. Yep. You got it. A um, little background on myself. Uh, I'm active duty military. And um, look at retirement in the near future. I I got certified as a trainer eh, a few years ago, kind of uh, on a lark. It was um, they, we had a program where they would pay for a certification, like something you could spin into uh, something that would help your military career, and they would just flat pay for it. So I got uh, certified as a personal trainer, thinking it would help out uh, my airmen with their their fitness uh, fitness goals and uh, the requirements because. Everybody knows the military, we're required to maintain a certain fitness standard. 
But the part they don't tell you is nobody tells you how to do that. They just say, go run and you'll be okay. You know, like, so I thought maybe this would help me out. And what came from that uh, kind of ironically is that I fell in love with the process. Uh, I fell in love with other people's successes and um, the, the PRs of my, my new clients actually became more important than my own. It was a, it was kind of a wild experience. And through that experience of like, I said, falling in love with the process and, and helping people out. Um, I've never actually charged anybody for my services. Like it's, I'm just helping my airmen. I'm doing what I need to do. Um, even when I uh, recently lived in Japan, I uh, was very involved with uh, the Japan leg of Spartan race. And even then I didn't charge for anything. It was all volunteer because throughout all this time, I've still received my full, uh, my full military salary. So that wasn't like I needed the money. I, I did it for the love of doing it, for the love of helping people. And through that whole time, uh, my wife, some of my peers and my fellow coaches have always told me like not to devalue myself and that I should be charging and that, um, you know, to, to get compensated for my time and, and for what it's worth. But throughout all of it, I've never really felt like I knew what it was worth. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to overcharge people. I wanted to help people. I didn't want to like overcharge them or feel like a salesman trying to like grub the money because the money wasn't the point. And I'm, I'm sure you guys can kind of sympathize a little bit with that. Um, so my question is kind of, kind of twofold, kind of two part is um, how do you, I say guesstimate, maybe like a rule of thumb or guesstimate kind of a baseline of where do you start that price at, I guess. And as I don't really, know what I feel like it's worth um, or what I'm worth. And that's not to downplay myself. I, I love me. I would never talk badly about myself, but I wouldn't um, kind of not knowing what that, what that service is worth. Um, do you guys have any recommendations on how to, how to get that feeling, how to really get the vibe of like, okay, this is what, this is what my time is worth and this is what it deserves um, without taking away from the, the spirit of it all. Is that, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, so there's a, there's a, I guess a plain answer. Um, but then there's also a more, I guess, accurate answer for this particular individual individual question. So the plain answer markets determine what uh, the, the cost of products and services. So that's a negotiation between <clears throat> you and your customer. Now I say negotiation, I don't mean literally like you're sitting down negotiating with someone, but it's literally, you know, how much you feel you you know, want to charge and then how much your customers or clients are willing to pay for your service. Okay. That's the very plain, basic market-based kind of answer. Now I'm going to tell you a story that'll kind of illustrate where I'm going to go. But I remember years ago, I had this uh, discussion with some staff members and we were talking about what brings value and meaning and purpose to employees. And one of the people that I was with made the argument that it was their pay. Like the more they get paid, the more valuable they, they believe they are and the harder they're going to work. And I thought about that for a second. And then I I, I replied and said, no, I don't think that's the case. I said, some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life are volunteers. People that volunteer their services for a cause that they feel uh, very deeply um, behind. So this is a, so th this is much more complex. So it's going to be like this. Look, um, A, number one, don't worry about what other people say. If you feel the value you're getting is in the service you're providing and you love doing it and you can already support yourself, then that's perfectly fine. Now, if on the other side, you're like, look, I also need to be able to earn some, uh, you know, some money while I do this because it is taking, um, some of my time. I just don't know what to charge. You can always start with the average of what the market is around where you're at and then move from there and then move up from there. And that's just kind of like a basic, easy way to kind of start. The other thing too, is that you got to remember, um, asking people for money for your services, mm -hmm. isn't going to be disrespectful to them. If anything, People often appreciate the opportunity to give you something for the value that you're providing. It's like, it's like having a friendship. Like one of the best things you can do with a friendship is to ask your friend for a favor and they'll feel good doing that for you. So now here, these people, you're working with them. They, and it's like, I remember when we started the podcast, we didn't ask for a dime for a year. We didn't sell a single product. We knew it was time to monetize because we had hundreds of emails of people begging us for a way to give us money to donate. Can we just give you something? You're providing us so much value. And then we knew, and, and these, these people felt so much value from what we were doing. It's like, they wanted to be able to give us something. So then we started monetizing and that's how we knew. So 
I would start with kind of the market average and then and then take it from there, what you're comfortable with. I have, I have a couple of thoughts around this, Eddie. So first of all, I think it's it's great that you're like this. I mean, that's your integrity, right? You have this, you have this, you, have, you have integrity about it. You, you know that you're learning and figuring things out yourself. And through that process, you, you know, Hey, I don't feel like I'm going to charge anybody right now. You have the luxury of having an income without it. And so it's a great place to be to, to earn your stripes. Uh, I, th there is no like wrong or right way to do this. I'll tell you how I did this. Right. So when I moved into the digital coaching space. That was new for me. Even though I had a trainer background, I didn't know how to structure it or what it would look like or how am I going to provide these people value virtually. So what I did was I kind of looked around and saw what, what the, the the average price that a you know, online coach was charging people. At that time, I think it was around, you know, $250 to $300 a month is what the, the service is. And then I looked into like, what are they doing for that that price? And oh, they have these check-ins once a week and they give a meal plan and it work out. And that's kind of what they do. And it's like, okay, so my goal was I'm going to start lower than what the average is, what everybody else is selling, because I want to prove that I can provide as much or more value than what everybody else is. So I was going to undercut them in price just a little bit. So I think I started like the 150, 200 range, and I was going to go out there and see if I could do everything they were doing and more to provide value for the people that were coming my way. And then I did that until my book got full. And it was like, okay, I'm going to just, I'm going to take on as many of these people for this price point until my book and my time was, was full and I couldn't really take anybody else on. And then I told myself, okay, now as one person falls off and I have to go get another client, I'm going to just increase my price by 50 bucks. And then I'm going to, and I just kept doing that until I finally reached a place where I was charging significantly more than everybody else was. And in that process, I was learning how to get how to how to do this, how what everybody else was providing value, find finding ways to how could I do even more than what other people were doing, and then also getting feedback from the people that I was servicing and helping. Like, was I really changing lives? Were they giving me like, oh my god, that was so helpful. Oh my god, you're so great. Were they starting to refer me to their friends? And I would tell them that, hey, this is a price that I'm charging you, but if you refer me to a friend, please don't let them know what we're, what I'm charging because my my price that I'll be charging other people will be X, right? Mm -hmm. So you would tell the people that you're currently charging so they feel special, right? That you're doing them a favor by charging them this low price, price point. If you do a really good job, a percentage of those people will go out and tell their friends. And that was kind of my goal was like, can I help this these immediate five to 10 to 15 mm -hmm. people right now so well for such a good deal that they want to go out and tell their friends, their family that, Hey, you got to work with Eddie. He's the best. He helped me with this. He did all these things. And so that was like what the goal was, was go prove to myself. I can impact these people this much that they go out and tell others about me when they go tell others about me, letting them know that, Hey, this is your price. Anybody else, it'll be this price if they come on. And then that's how I kind of just kept leveling my price up along the way. So that's my first thought around this. My second thought was, did you did you show up to our three free day training? I absolutely did. I was okay, gonna good. I was gonna bring that up because um, I'm I feel like you guys are uh, speaking to me directly when you talk about the trainer who doesn't want to do sales and who yeah. doesn't want to yeah. who just wants to grind out there doesn't want to sell. Like I feel like you're targeting me. Um, so I did do the three day <laughs> training. I really appreciate that because it it definitely changed my uh, perspective on a lot of that stuff and the the point of view I have of like you know I. I can't help people if I can't provide for myself and I can't um, get there if I'm not like putting value to it, if that makes sense. So that yeah. the three day training was amazing. Uh, I will say it was a little rough because uh, the time difference between you guys, it was about 1 a.m. here mm -hmm. when I was watching. So <laughs> I may uh, I may go try and go back and watch it again if it's still up. I don't know if they're still up on the Internet or not for replays, but I may give it a second hack after some sleep. <laughs> you, you can replay yeah. it. And you are, by the way, Eddie, you are normal. Yeah. Most trainers, you're the majority. You are, and that I mean, the reason why we put that product out, like, so when we built the Mind, Co Mind Pump Coaching Program, we were we saw a need in the market. There's this there's this thing where we all focus on national certifications, the education, the nutrition part, and and yet nobody was really speaking to trainers on how to get good at sales, how to scale their business, how to make money, and that's a big part of being successful as a personal trainer is knowing how to do that. 
And so that's what that course was all about. And so, yes, one, you could do that. Two, you would gain tremendous value from that community that we built. So, and there's also payment options, all that, because you're not charging people, you're not making a lot of money off of personal training. You have the ability to enter in there and do a payment thing on the coaching. And then you have a community with all of us in there that are helping trainers just like yourself scale their business. Yeah. I think this is a, an, interesting awesome. industry because it's it's a lot of people are very passionate about helping people and that's kind of what they lead with which is amazing and that's why i love uh you know the majority of trainers and that mm. mentality and the integrity you're kind of uh, presenting with that however you have to be able to also consider in order to be able to scale and keep your business afloat and, and keep everything operating appropriately you know that's just one of those those things we have to be up front and, and two it almost actually brings a little bit more anxiety when you're unsure about uh being able to charge somebody you know a specific amount of money there's this expectation there that needs to be met in the very beginning so it's just it's one of those things that kind of just relieves both individuals of this this extra like unknown so to to have an unknown of like you know well well when are you going to ramp your charges up or when you know when, when is this going to change or is this always going to be the case or you know that that uncertainty actually brings a lot more stress to the clients than i think the the trainers realize and to have like a very clear concise presentation uh, and not be afraid of it and, and not to, you know, sort of like convey that energy towards your client uh, is really helpful for the client because now it's like, okay, I'm on board. I have accountability. You know, this is the expectation. Like everything's clearly laid out. Um, it, it just, everything runs smoother as a result. Yeah, of that. You know, the irony too, Eddie, is that paying clients tend to be more the consistent. consistent ones. They tend to be right. more consistent and they tend to value uh, what you're providing more than people um, who are getting it for free. If the reason why you're not charging, if part of the reason you're not charging is because you're afraid to ask for money or it feels weird to you, then you definitely need to ask for money. If the reason why you're not charging is because you just feel like you really want to be charitable, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're being yeah. honest with yourself, you don't have to answer here, but if you're like, Ugh, yeah, I'd like to ask for money, but it's kind of weird and I don't know how and whatever, you definitely need to then. Don't let that stop you. Yeah. Because that's preventing you from being the best best trainer you could be for sure. This is what in mind pump fitness coaching, this is what we're talking. This is yeah. the stuff, this is what the conversations are centered around because this was so common. The, this is what trainers get involved, most trainers get involved because they have a passion for helping others. And that is what got them to be a personal trainer. What they find out when they get into it, they go, oh shit a lot of this is sales, a lot more than I thought it was. And that's the only part of the job they don't like. And it's like, that's okay. We can get good at that. Like mm -hmm. I, I loved helping trainers like yourself because being passionate about helping people, I can't instill that in you. You either are or you're not. And if you already got that, I can make you a good sales, a good at sales because it's just effective communication. So, and that's really right. what, what we spent a lot of time talking about. So, yeah. Eddie, you need to get your ass in there. Yeah, and our passion is to keep you guys in business, <laughs> yeah. you know, keep you guys getting <laughs> clients because we need people that care. So that, you know, it, it's, it's a bit of a conundrum, but yeah, we, we definitely, that's that's our passion is to be able to help provide tools for you guys to, to thrive uh, in what you do. Doug, can you send him the replay? Okay. I'm going to make sure we send you over the replay so you can watch all that stuff. And then I want to see you inside that community. If I don't, I'm going to come hunt you down. In Germany. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you got about six months and I'm going to be in a new country, but I'll, like, I'll, I'll hit you oh, up on man. Instagram and let you know so you can try to find me. <laughs> We're GPS all right. all right, Eddie. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Cause I'm kind of at like a transitional point now. Like, like I said, I have the salary, but I'm also looking at retirement. And when I retire from the service, I'm looking at uh, a literal 50% pay cut. Mm -hmm. like i'll still have some money but that's a that's a big pay cut so yeah um let's get you that's paid. definitely where this is yeah let's, exactly let's get I, you, I appreciate let's, everything you guys do man because yeah. it's in the last uh month or so you guys have definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things especially with that that seminar awesome mm -hmm. good. good deal man all right eddie we'll send that over to you we'll, we'll keep in touch excellent all right yeah, man appreciate you guys you all right, got it, brother. keep on doing it thank you it's interesting how common that is uh among trainers uh and it's just really the the misconception that asking for money somehow means you're taking advantage of someone or communicating in a way where the person wants to hire you is somehow taking a, you know advantage or manipulator. It's not. If you, it's like, look at, if you're a trainer, it's like that lady that comes to you that wants to hire you and then says, yeah, but I can't make time for exercise. I need to do this for my kids. I need to do this for my husband. And you're like, listen, you want to help your kids. You got to be fit and healthy. Otherwise you can't help them. If you want to help people as a trainer, 
you got to be able to have a career doing this. Otherwise, you're helping nobody. I just right. think that it's, I mean, can you think of another profession where there is this massive misconception on what the job entails? Meaning nobody nobody thinks about personal training and go like, oh, that's a sales job. They don't like you, car sales. No one gets a job as a car yeah, salesman yeah. and go, oh, what? I got to sell? Retail, anything. Yeah, re yeah. like you, you, don't, you don't enter in a, a job like car sales and go, Oh, I didn't know I was going to have to sell cars. It's, it's almost as if they feel like they're just going to get a job and then client they'll just yes. get and handed clients. Well, what they think is uh, I think what or not, what most people assume is that if I'm just a really good trainer and I help people really well and I change their lives, which is what I'm passionate about and I want to do, the clients will just come. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that no. way. There's a there is a massive component of sales that's involved in personal training. Yeah. And like you it's always continuous. say, it's not just this, it's not everyone thinks sales and they hear that word and they get it's like it's just effective communication. And you you have to sell your clients on your ideas. You have to sell your clients on behavioral change. You have to sell your clients on You're on, constantly selling. Yeah, you're constantly selling. And so if you don't embrace that that is a massive part of being a personal trainer, you're going to struggle. Look, you know, 100%. If you, if I don't you, care how good you are. If you've right. listened to our podcast and we've communicated something to you that has made you change your behavior, that's it's because we sold it to you. Yeah, and we did it effectively. That's exactly what this is all about. It's not Every about- Every podcast is a sales course. Uh, it, it is us trying to sell people on why they need to make changes in their life. And if you're a trainer, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Our next caller is Matt from Utah. Matt, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, um, so this is kind of a, I don't know, question slash victory lap of sorts. <laughs> so <right>. um, <laughs> I, I said the question a while back. So, okay, for the last four years, I have been crazy consistent. This is like Sal levels of consistent. Um, oh. But and I've gone through the whole RGB. I've done symmetry. I didn't power lift. But um, I always modified everything for at home versions, even power lift. I did it at home made amazing progress. Yeah, I'm in my mid 40s right now. Awesome strength gains. Even on power lift, I had these 100 pound dumbbells each. Awesome. Great. Wow. I just got a membership to a gym back in October. Been a long time since I'd gone, but I figured, you know, this will be fun. Started power lift. And when I sent my question originally in, like after that first phase, I was making insane jumps. Talking like, over 10 pounds on bench, including more reps. And I'm like, I am in my mid forties. I have been crazy consistent. This is like unheard of. I'm like, does a gym really make that much of a difference? <laughs> but then to add to it, um, at the very beginning, I did the electric impedance body fat thing. You know, it's a fancy gym one where you hold the little things. Um, and I just did it last week and looking at the numbers, cause I've been on a gain on, you know, and a reverse diet. I went from 190 to 200, you know, feeling pretty good. This is pretty awesome. I'm about 5'11". Um, I looked at the, the, what is it? The lean body mass. And I had gained 15 pounds. And I'm like, how does that make any sense? I've only gained 10. Looked on down. I lost five pounds of fat. So here I am pushing up to like 3,500 calories, you know, a, a mid forties working out like crazy anyway. So kind of answered my own question, but I'd love to hear your <laughs> thoughts about how, how the hell does a gym make that much of a difference? Well, what, what kind of equipment did you have at home and what's changed? Um, at home, I have like, I had a suspension, a suspension trainer bands, each dumbbell, they're adjustable dumbbells, but they'd go up to hundred pounds each. So by the end, when I did power lift a year ago doing this, it was like, you know, 200 pounds, you know, like with the dumbbells, I slowed down my reps even to try to make it even no better. Bar, no barbell? No barbell at home? No barbell at oh, all. Oh, bro. Yeah, that's, 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 your answer. that's your answer right there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's how, that's how. Barbell's that, huge. That's why that is, okay, we always tell, and you're a perfect example of what we always talk about. Like, you can make huge gains and build a great physique and build muscle and lose body fat and get in great shape just with a, a set of dumbbells and working out yeah. at home. But if you have the luxury of a gym and you have the ability to get a hold of a, a barbell and a squat rack. I mean, there's a reason why those are the big lifts. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're so valuable. Yeah. And you're a perfect example of even somebody who's already made all these gains for the last four years, but then introducing barbell lifts, look at what's happened. Yep. No, I mean, look, uh, if for the average person who's working out a few days a week and misses workouts, you know, here and there, like you don't need to go crazy with equipment. 
someone like you who's super consistent, something like that makes a huge difference. I mean, you're super consistent with dumbbells. You're following good programming, our workouts, and you haven't used barbells for four years. Then you switch to be able to use barbells and maybe a couple machines or whatever. Yeah, you're going to see huge jumps. You also probably have some pretty good strength and muscle building genetics there. Were you an athlete uh, as a kid? Did you play sports? Um, I, I mean, I played a lot of soccer growing up. Um, I was the first soccer player at my at my honky tonk school to do power lifting. So um, <laughs> part of this, but I haven't really lifted since like my early 20s because, you know, I just kept having random nagging injuries for a while. But um, yeah, this has also been kind of chasing what I did last time, you know, back in, you know, back in the late 90s doing power lifting. I'm trying to chase what the, what my lifts were back then. But also I'm doing it like, without a belt, no knee wraps, no wow. wraps, no nothing, and ass to grass on the squat. So it's, what were it's a lifts? different experience. What were you, just out of curiosity, what did you hit in the late 90s, and what are you doing now? Gosh, um, I, I mean, I hit that 1,000-pound club. I was really pushing for um, for uh, for 1,200, but I didn't quite get there. And this was in your te year. late teens? It was my late teens, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're strong as fuck, bro. That's a, that's a really hard, I mean, getting up to close to 1,200 total with the three lifts, that's a big, that's a strong kid. That's yeah, I remember I was strong. like the, when I basically stopped, I was pushing like 275 for my bench, but my shoulder gave out because I didn't do any shoulder workouts yeah. or any rows or anything. I was just like dumb kid, you know, <laughs> working out triceps like crazy until eventually my shoulder was like, ah, screw you. So, yeah, no, good job, dude. I mean, this is this is what can be done when things are all lined up and you're consistent and adding barbells makes a huge difference just yeah. because. There's no individual balance on each side. Your CNS can fire harder, and now you can generate more force. So this is why you take somebody's max barbell lift. You can't just divide it in two and, and create two dumbbells. Like if somebody could bench 400 pounds, that does not mean they could do two 200-pound dumbbells. It probably means they could do two 130-pound dumbbells or something like that. So the barbell definitely adds an element of being able to generate power, and that's what you're experiencing. To gain 15 pounds of lean body mass is phenomenal. Yeah, especially at your phenomenal. age and all the yeah. years, too. That's and awesome. it sounds like your metabolism is through the roof. So you're this is oh, exactly it, where you want to be. I, I, I keep increasing calories, and it just, like, I, well, I followed the method as well where I'd go for a good three weeks of a bulk and then one maintenance and then do three weeks. And I, I mean, last time I did this, like, it didn't go up nearly as fast. Well, it's weird. It, like it's almost like it plateaus yeah. or slart. Like right when I see it starting to plateau, then I do the maintenance, and then immediately right after it shoots right back up. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's almost like we know what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 I, I do. I, I have to. Oh, go ahead, Justin. What are you saying? Oh no, I just said it's weird, right? <laughs> well, I was gonna say I'm probably one of the only people who has legit listened to every single episode. So. I well, started probably about four years ago and then actually went backwards and started re-listening to stuff. Awesome. So. Well, you've you've earned your victory lap, Matt. Well, yeah, well done. Well done, sir. Good stuff, Good man. Work. Awesome. Well, keep us posted as you continue to hit PRs. I have a feeling you're going to continue yeah. to see gains now that you're in the gym. Dude, I'm doing, I'm in, I'm in the peak week right now. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. The crazy thing is, is on the percentages because I'm being very like you know diligent to stick to the percentages i know i can do more oh, that's exactly that's but great. i can feel it but i'm like no be chill just Good. follow it Good. and just see it so i'm hoping exactly. next week i should actually know what for real what what my max is well, send, send uh, us yeah. an email awesome. yeah email in i'd love to hear where how it's going keep us posted yep awesome All right, this Matt. is great guys thanks, thanks brother well, that's great. <laughs> He's made I it love, on here twice like that. Uh, that's funny. I love. Like, we'll call that. you back. You know, I, for feeling I, low. I love hearing that, man. Yeah. It's like you know, and he's in his mid forties. Look, you, there, you can do tremendous things in your mid forties, fifties, even sixties, uh, with just good consistency and focusing on the big rocks: exercise, diet, sleep, and lifestyle. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. It's a great example too of like the because it <clears throat> obviously there's a lot of stuff out there. It's oh you don't need to do these barbell lifts, you know, mm -hmm. deadlifts and squatting yeah. is overrated. And it's like dude, there's here's an example of yeah he built tremendous strength, got in great shape with just a set of dumbbells at mm -hmm. his house, which is 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 perfect for somebody who doesn't have access to a gym. And they just want to be yeah. healthy and fit. But if you're chasing PRs and you're trying to build the most muscle you possibly can. Having access to a barbell to be able to do those barbell lifts, of course, make it, a huge. It's difference. such a huge difference. I had a client who I was training at their house with just bands and dumbbells, and then we finally got a chance to go into the gym and like use barbells, and it was like 
immediate like results. Like yeah. it's it's crazy difference. It probably really served him to actually yeah. train as long as he did without it, right? Build and good he, patterns. He did things like yeah. symmetry. Mm-hmm. He did yeah. all our foundational stuff. So he did all the right programs from home. Yeah, got a nice solid base, and then went in there with yeah. momentum. It's actually ideal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously that's what's going on with him. That's great. Our next caller is Nina from Canada. Hi, Nina. How can we help you? Hello. Oh, my God. It's the Mind Pump guy. Hey, yeah. hey, it's us. We're here. You're here. <laughs> this is super exciting. I get to see, like, the whole place now. You only ever see it piece by piece. But yeah. <laughs> How can awesome. we help you? Uh, okay. So, this, um, I submitted my question to you guys a few months ago before I bought my first ever bodybuilding show. Um, so it's since happened. So maybe that'll make the question more interesting. I feel a bit sheepish because I have been doing, I've been a personal trainer for oh, like 12, 15 years. I don't even know anymore. And, but bodybuilding was brand new to me. I'd never actually gone that far with it. So anyway, so here, my question was um, having come through a deficit. I was in a deficit for about three and a half months. I worked with a coach and I got down, uh, I lost 20 pounds. That was like my stage, my stage weight was about 136. And I was, I started at 155 and I was doubting myself of what to do post competition in terms of reverse dieting out of that. Um, what was a healthy weight regain? Cause my coach had given me one answer, which contradicted what I thought was right. And I guess I wanted to put it to you guys, like what would be a healthy rate of weight regain and how is it better to just ease in calories or just jump all of a sudden to back to normal and and go with that? Tell me what your coach said and what you thought uh, so I can assess that. And then also give me an idea of when you went into the diet, where you were calorie wise, where you were when you actually hit stage calorie wise too. Yeah. Okay. So I started out at seven seventeen fifty calories, um, and then that went down to sixteen fifty for about a month out, and then I went down to about fifteen fifty. Oh wow! Uh, closer to stage, so it was like a few couple weeks out. Um, not too bad. Did, did, but did you? Okay, that's that's like actually mm-hmm. not much movement at all. Did you do most? Mm-hmm. Get create the caloric deficit through movement and cardio. <laughs> Yes. So I did 15,000 steps a day, um, pretty much the whole time through. Uh, and he only upped my cardio a few times. It was actually quite <laughs> mild. It was a uh, three started out with just a couple of times a week of 30 minutes steady state. And then he upped it to closer to stage. He was a little bit nervous. So he upped it to five days a week, 30, 30 minutes steady not state. That's not bad at not, all. Not bad at all. I know. Right. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I went down pretty lean. I guess my, my concern came from, uh, I had previously lost my period for nine years when when I first did at, when I first ever lost weight with way back when, and so I was nervous. I was nervous uh, that it would happen again, uh, and so after this the show, he advised me to go up to two thousand calories straight away. And me being a woman, I was worried of gaining weight. <laughs> so, uh, so I was a little bit nervous to jump that quickly. I had thought in my head, maybe I should just take it 100 calories at a time. So um, I'll tell you what I did. What I did was I ignored my coach, stupid. Um, and I, <laughs> I climbed, I was 17, I jumped back to 1700 for only a week. And then I jumped it to 18 and then very quickly 19. And then I'm probably sitting at like 20 five or 2,600 now. Um, I'm about four to five pounds up since then, okay. which is you're good. strange. Yeah. No, um, you're, you're fine. You're fine. You're Nina, great. You're okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're totally okay. Great. So st- All right. I still though, my period did disappear and it's been three months now going yeah. into month four. And I'm, I, some people say that it can come back. It's just taking its time, but I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. There's two things, two things to consider when, when reverse dieting, one is what happens physiologically. And then the other is what happens psychologically. Now the physiological correct answer is what your coach said going up 500 mm-hmm. calories was, but would have been fine at 1500 to 2000. Okay. Totally fine psychologically though, is what we always consider first, because if going up 500 calories is going to throw you into a spin, I don't care. I'm going to have you go slowly then. Okay. Now, as far as your, your period is concerned, by the way, you're, you're fine. You're, it's not like you did something terribly wrong by not jumping up 500. Right. You're, you're totally fine. Yeah. 
Okay, you want your, your period to come back. You got to keep reducing volume of your workouts and upping your calories. Bumping your calories up will probably do it by itself. But what do your workouts look like now? Did you cut the cardio out? Like, or are you doing this? What do I your did. steps look like? Okay. Are yeah, your steps still 15,000? I, well, I can, I consumed a bunch of your podcasts around reverse dieting. So to kind of see what, what others had done. So I, yeah, I took off the cardio completely. Um, I still get between 12 to 15,000 steps only just because I'm in the habit of it and it's good for my brain. But, but, um, but yeah, I took away any unnecessary cardio. I also listened to you guys, um, your advice on switching gears and training. So I opted for way more like just strength based. I took out any supersets or anything, even though I love them. Um, but I went kind of more to the power and I was trying to get my squat up, which, you know, 245. Oh, Holy um, shit. Hey. But That's thanks. Great. You got a great physique, <laughs> um, by the way, too. We're looking at your Instagram. You got a lot of muscle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank I, you. My, I can, my best game is my weighted pull ups. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you why. I can tell you why you probably haven't got your period back. Tell me. Your, your, your body fat's still too low. So regardless, yeah. Of, yeah, regardless of your calories, regardless of your activity, if your body fat percentage for women, if their body fat percentage is too low, their body will often feel not safe enough to be fertile. Okay, so we got to mm-hmm. get your. You're still pretty lean. Is this post show? You think? Is I that, don't know. No, that, well, if you only gained four pounds from your show, and I saw what your show picture yeah. looked, your body fat probably barely went up. When was when was the show? Show is November twelfth. Oh, oh yeah, you're lean. You're yeah, still yeah. really. I still lean. have yeah. some muscle, but yeah, no, yeah. you have a, you have a lot of muscle. Do you still. know what your you're, body fat? You're just, is? you're just you're just lean, like Sal's saying. Yeah. And by the mm-hmm. way, you're. It sounds like you have a decent coach too, because the coach yeah, giving you, I, because you had lost your period. So typically, if I cut somebody a lot of calories. And then we're reversing out. I would do like kind of this slow, methodical, adding calories back in, reducing cardio and kind of watching, making sure we don't. If I had a client like you who had lost their period, I'd actually want to put on body fat relatively quick and get her back to a, a healthy body fat range. And so his advice was pretty spot on for you of an increased calorie. It's not that you did it wrong, by the way, either. But the reason like Sal is alluding to right now why you haven't got it back still is just you just you still need to put body fat on. Yeah. You're you're still re- really lean. Yeah. You could literally be you could be eating a lot of calories. You could be really strong in the gym. You could be feeling good. But if your body fat percentage is too low, then your body many times, many women still won't get their period. So it's literally mm-hmm. you just got to have more body fat on your body. Do you know what you're you're sitting at now? What your body fat percentage is at now? I don't quite know. I mean, I've only kind of been going from like progress photos to kind of gauge, and I bought myself calipers, which uh, I'm still learning how to use. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Really, yeah I, I would really, say most in my right experience, you know, fit and healthy women. So you know, real healthy women. Typically, I got to get their body fat percentage in the at least in the high teens before. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking in a, in a subcategory of women that would have issues with their period. Typically, I've got to get their body fat percentage at least above 17, 18 percent, sometimes in the low 20s, which, by the way, that's a great strength building body fat percentage for women is in that range, like 18 to 22 percent. Like you sitting there, you're still lean. You still look phenomenal. But now your body has enough body fat for that estrogen and progesterone to do its thing. So now the problem Mm -hmm. is if you've become addicted to the look of the muscle striations and the abs and all that stuff, psychologically it could be really difficult, but um, it'll be good for you. It'll be good for you to get, let your body fat climb up a little bit, you know, and for men, men get away with leaner body fat percentages than women do without hormonal effects. Now men still get hormonal effects if they get too lean. But remember, our bodies did not evolve to support life in the same way. Our bodies evolved to support movement, to support life. You literally, your body literally is like, I don't have enough body fat to to to, to you know host a child. So you got to get it up a little bit. So it's this is like one of those cases where it's like, hey, let's get some, let's put some body fat on. So I'd go on a bulk if I were you. On another note, uh, Nina, I see you're also a coach too. Are you in our coaching program yet? I actually was at your, yeah, your initial announcement training as well. So it was very exciting. Okay, good, good. So you're in the, are you in the forum then with all the trainers with us? Thousand percent. I was like the most excited to be there. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know what? uh, Let's talk about it in there. I would love to follow your progress and and this will be great too, by the way, because as a trainer, this is going to, you know, you probably already, I mean, you, you've been doing this for a while, so you, you probably know what you're doing, but when you do it with yourself, it makes you so much more effective 
with clients mm. because you've experienced it yourself. And you're in this, like, this is a great, this is a great question because oftentimes when women lose their period, it's a very easy answer. It's like, well, you're, you're obviously, you know, working out way too much and you're not eating enough, but like, you're strong. You obviously have a lot of energy. You're eating a, a, a you know, okay amount of calories. You came out of your contest. It's, this is literally like a, Hey, we got to put body fat on. And you may run into mm -hmm. clients like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it's funny because I, I mainly work with clients that go the other direction. Like I'm more like I'm helping people with uh, lifestyle habits and feeling better about themselves and just, just getting um, kind of away from, from overthinking calories and overthinking foods. So I, I don't know if I would ever train like a, a bodybuilder, but that's, I guess that's why I wanted to put it to you guys. Cause this was such new territory for me. And, yeah. and mm. it's just funny how you can know the right things and yet still get caught up with like, like I put my scale away just in case yeah. it would cause me to, cause I, I, I don't look at the scale or a tracking food tracker unless I'm trying to cut. So it's like this mental hurdle. That's great. <laughs> like, it's great. Putting That's it away. That's yeah. super great self-awareness. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you mind if I give you a shout out? You're a train. You're one of our trainers. You mind if I give you a shout out on the show? Oh my God. Are you kidding? I'm going to get all awkward, but sure. <laughs> yeah. So coach, coach Nina Wilder on Instagram. And I, I, we're looking, Doug's scrolling through your Instagram as we're talking and I'm seeing some of your oh. clients. Success like stories things, and stuff. Doug. <laughs> yeah, so it looks great. You got a great page too. So if you give her a follow if you're, if you're looking for some good advice, coach. Thank Nina you Wilder. so much, guys. I, I respect you so much. And it was between between you three and and Lane Norton. I think I just I consumed all of you guys just to like get myself through this in the most healthy way possible because it's just it's not worth job. it to me anymore yeah. to kill yourself. Awesome. Yeah, you did awesome. a great job. You go did a great go job. on a bulk. Go yeah. have some fun yeah, with the bulk. Fun with it, for sure. I will. <laughs> yeah, watch your strength go through the roof, yeah. and it'll be great. Right on. I love eating. All right. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thanks, Nina. All right, Nina. We'll see you in the forum. Thank you so much, guys. I right. got it. Bye. Bye-bye. That was great. Yeah. And yeah. you know, um, really uh, a great job, coach, whoever coached Yeah, her. dude. Yeah. I was expecting a rare to hear. So, so right? I was like, yeah. wait, 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 wait a second. You When she started oh, at 17, I'm like, uh oh. Yeah, you reduced your calories only basically 200 in the entire prep. And, and you showed down up shredded. And you dropped 20 pounds. Yeah. I'm like, uh, how did that happen? So, but I mean, what a great example of putting yourself somewhere very like uh, in a good place metabolically before starting the show mm -hmm. with the fact that she only had to cut a couple hundred calories. She didn't have to do crazy I mean, cardio. showtime. She was doing she, five days a week. She just did, which is that's, that's 30 minutes. Yeah. A day. I, I mean, even I was doing an hour of cardio every day, the last week or two yeah. going into the show. Mm -hmm, I yeah. mean, that, that's your final, you know, cut and then you push the body for that week or two. But leading up to that, exactly how I managed it was just through steps was increasing steps and movement every single week. And uh, what I love her motivation going into doing it, you yeah. know, even to kind of, you know, get perspective that way. I think that's, that's a great way to, she's just super lean still. It. That's it. That's I mean, for, it for women. It's like, I've run into men, by the way, where they were doing everything right, but they had to get fatter for their testosterone to go up. They're yeah. sitting at 5% body fat. And it's like, you got to get up to nine, eight, nine percent at least before you start to see testosterone levels go up. With women, you're too lean. Your body oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes just won't let you have a period. And to encourage her that by doing that, it, it's only going she'll feel to- amazing. She'll amazing. She's going to yeah. feel better. It's going to balance out the hormones. And if even she's squatting 245, she's yeah, going to be a 300 even, pound squat. Even if, you, asked, even if the, strong, you put dude. a little bit of fat on that initially, I mean, that you're in a place where that can, yep. in, in a week's time, you can take it, take it off. I mean, where she's at. So good place. That's cool. Our next caller is Matt from Florida. Matt, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? What's up, man? Uh, pretty good. How are y'all? Good, good, dude. All right, cool. So first of all, like everybody that usually calls in, I want to thank y'all for the podcast. Um, I found the podcast about a year and a half ago when I was first starting to getting into lifting. So it's been very helpful, very encouraging. And then I genuinely enjoyed the beginning intros, like just the the dudes talking and and joking around. So thank you for the podcast overall. Um, thank you, man. Like I said, I've been into fitness for about a year and a half and throughout listening to the podcast, y'all talk a lot about sleep health. And so I have a, a two part question. Uh, the first one is the first part is like, I'm in the military and have constant shift changes. So I can work eight to three one day. And then the very next day I can work 11 at night to six in the morning. Uh, or sometimes I have to go in early or stay late. So how do you manage uh, or how do you manage to get good quality sleep when you have a job that changes shifts easily? I think one of the things that's important that 
we recognize in, in someone in a situation like you or when you have a job that does this to you and you're, there's like no way around that, right? You're not the one who gets to dictate, uh, you know, I get to work this day, not work this day. And so we have to find ways to work around the schedule. Managing the other stress in your life is going to be as important or more important, meaning it's going to, it's almost impossible. You aren't going to have the most optimal, perfect sleep every night because of the schedule. And so the mistake that a lot of people make is they, okay, I can't fix that. So they just chalk it up as fuck it, whatever. And then they go train. And when they train, they train really intense or they also are high volume. And so what we need to do is learn how to modify your training based off of the sleep patterns that you have and try and know when to push the body like, okay, this was a better night's rest. I felt really good. Now this is when I'm going to push the intensity in the workout. Oh, this is when I got the shift change. Now I'm on this. Now I feel like I'm jet lagging. This is not the day that I'm going to go crush it. I'm going to do something that's more recuperative. And so when you train right now, are you doing your own programming or are you following one of our programs? So I finished up MAPS Anabolic uh, a couple months ago, and my unit has a strength coach embedded. I'm doing a program with him for the next two months, and then I plan to do uh, another MAPS program afterwards. I l I'd like MAPS 15 I for was someone like the same you. Thing. You know, the, here's the, this is the best thing you can do. Look, your, your sleep's going to suck no matter what. So the best thing we can do is mitigate the damage, okay? So an hour and a half to two hours before you can sleep, you need to do a, an effective sleep routine. No electronics, blue light blocking glasses, like really good ones that actually cover the top and the bottom. So you might look like a dork, but whatever. Wear those when you're outside. And then this is where a, a low dose uh, extended release melatonin supplement may help. Because you're not getting the melatonin release when your sleep is flipped every other day, I would take it about an hour before bed and do the sleep routine just to try to mitigate the damage as much uh, as possible. And then what Adam said with the workouts is, is the other thing. And I wouldn't eat two hours before going to bed. So that means you're going to have to fast sometimes. You want to basically prep your body as much as possible for scheduled sleep to make it as good as you possibly can. That's the best you could do. Okay. And that, and, and we're going to have, I'm going to have Doug send the map 15 to you. And so I like MAPS Anabolic. I don't think I don't think anybody has any qualms with that. The thing that I think I like MAPS 15 even better for you is that it's be, small frequent doses. It is. Uh, it's 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 broken up to just basically two exercises every time you work out. And so someone like you where your sleep is constantly being disrupted, uh the the level of stress that that workout's going to send in comparison to say an hour long anabolic is is much lower dose but you're still going to get great gains from this building muscle because overall the total volume for the week is still good. Are you able to like black out your room and uh, kind of control your environment a little bit more on those days where it's like, you know, you're, you're working from, um, what'd you say? Like 11 to six and, and now you're trying to sleep, you know, during the day when it's all bright out, are you able to control that or like even like have headphones in? I mean, I, this is where I'm like brain FM, uh, you know, might be a move to, to block out some noise and to kind of get you into better REM sleep. Like, I mean, there's, there's things out there, interventions out there to kind of incorporate and just to pile on kind of what Sal was talking about with blue light blocking glasses and all those things. So we have a few podcasts where we kind of mention some of those things. I would look into basically almost all of those things. Okay. Yeah. And I do, I, I am able to block out. I have some pretty stellar blockout curtains. Good. Sweet. Good. Oh, cool. That's yeah. Cool. You're, it's just literally, how can I maximize yep. this scheduled sleep time and, and make it work as good as possible? That's, that's yeah. what, that's where you got to think. And we didn't, we didn't talk about it, but, uh, eating, eating to take care of yourself and nourish yourself. Right. So like someone like you, not ideal to be in like a cut trying to get ripped and shredded while you're also going through all the stress, like make yeah. sure you're, you're well fed high protein, getting a good balanced diet, uh, think like that, you know, so you're, you're training to feed and take care of your body. Uh, definitely don't want to be trying to do things like cutting calories while also doing all this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, man. And then I did have a second part, but, uh, it was answered. It was, how do you manage your day or workout routine if you're constantly changing sleep and y'all hit a home run with that. So really do appreciate it. You got it, man. And thanks for what you do, yeah, man. Appreciate you. your service. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Hey, thank y'all. You All got right. it. You know, for anybody listening right now, uh, people whose 
sleep schedules change that often. If you look at the data on it, and it doesn't matter how healthy the rest of your life is, it is a major risk factor for heart disease, cancer, and everything. That's how hard of a stress it is on the body. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to make the case that when you're doing that, you like if you want to mitigate the damage, make yeah. everything else perfect. And, and, and really don't put too much stress on your I body. Think, I think that's the mistake that people make here, Sal, is that it, it's like there's some there's things that you can control and there are things you can't control, right? And you, yeah. you gave them all great things to like control, to try. But at the end of the day, it's just not optimal. Not it's just close. not ideal not for the body at all, at all. So then what you need to understand is like, now you got to become aware of all the other things in your life that cause stress to the body, and you have to be very careful about how you do that. Totally. Now, again, you can't. You don't want to add any more to the mix. Yeah, That's right. and so I think the biggest mistake I see people like this do, especially if you have probably discipline and you're a yeah. hardcore military, yeah. is that then you approach your workout with this like, got to kill it. Yeah. I know I feel like shit. I know I'm tired. Yeah, I no, didn't get no, sleep. No. Like, I got to get it though. Still, you know. Yeah. So it's like you got to learn to be able to you know, manage the other stressors in your life relative to what kind of sleep that you did or did not get the night before. Totally. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our free guides. We have free fitness guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. There's a lot of them, by the way. You can also follow us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. Adam is at mindpumpadam. 